Welcome to Snort Marks, everybody. We are a very funny wrestling podcast out of the uh, Central Valley of California. I'm Andrew. That's Dusty. Oh, hell yeah. I'm back. <laughs> and better than ever. Uh, uh-uh. Follow my- us. Follow us on all the uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, we're putting all our shits on YouTube, uh, not actual shits. That'd be weird. Uh, do you remember RateMyPoo.com? Did you ever go to that website, Dusty? <laughs> I never went to that one. Uh, I went to that one when I was a kid. Uh, very early internet weirdness. Very yeah. funny. Uh, <laughs> you could. I, I don't have to explain what it is. It's in the title. But yeah. um, the uh, uh, we're also on social media at Snark Marks Pot. We post cl- post clips of the show like uh, podcasts are supposed to do, apparently. Um, and, uh, Dusty is on Twitter at snarkmarkdi. I am on Instagram at Andrew Idell. Um, so we are not once again, becoming a wrestling podcast. We are not rebranding back in the other direction, but God damn it. Did I miss <laughs> wrestling? Dusty? It's the, yeah. I, I mean, it's the time of the season, you know, that it's is true. Re- WrestleMania is upon us. And, uh, I know you're very busy now. The whole week I empathized with like one of the upsides to doing the show we do the way we do it now. It's like, there's not a lot of stuff to watch necessarily. There might be some things that we do off pod to prepare, but like you had so much wrestling that you needed to watch this week in uh, preparation for this show. I did. I I watched a lot of wrestling. I watched a lot of wrestling YouTube videos. Uh, I uh, split it up over three days. Today, all I had to watch was uh, our final match, uh, which was cool. So I just sat down, made a breakfast sandwich, some egg and some ham. You know what I mean? Okay. Like a, like a regal gentleman. I went yeah. and got some decaf Americano, get the jitters going a little bit. Because uh, yeah, yeah. even decaf screws me because I'm a little sissy baby. <laughs> and um, I watched Re- WrestleMania 19 because, Dusty, today, what are we doing? Uh, today at Andrew's request, great idea. Um, Appreciate like it. I said, next weekend, WrestleMania is taking place, WrestleMania 40. So we wanted to go back through what might be the greatest WrestleMania feud of all time, slash maybe the greatest feud uh, in the history of wrestling. It's possible. It's certainly on the list. Uh, we are watching the Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock uh, feud. From its beginnings, you know, to to its finality, going hitting the high points, as it were. Yeah, this whole thing starts off just out of Rocky Maivia. They're still calling him Rocky Maivia, but he is the Rock. Yeah, he and wants then, to be the Rock. He has to keep correcting people that he's the Rock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, Rocky Maivia is just not a good name, in my opinion. Like uh, at least for like a well, and this might be a hindsight thing, you know what I mean? Because the Rock is such a better name. Right. But uh, Rocky Maivia just seems like it seems like not a jobber necessarily, but it seems like a guy you're not going to remember that much about. Um, and then uh, this ends with The Rock being a movie star. And the funny thing is, Stone Cold Steve Austin is just goddamn the Texas rattlesnake the whole time. He's just Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of um, changes, but there do- there doesn't need to be a lot of changes. It's the perfect wrestling gimmick. And we'll get to, we'll, we'll, obviously we're going to hit on a lot of things, but uh, we've got this guy, two guys that were at the top of their game, that were at the top of the, uh, of the genre, I almost called it a sport. Uh, it's it's kind of sporting, but you know, yeah. um, it's very rare that you, imagine if you had two Roman Reigns, but they were also like better, bigger than <laughs> Roman Reigns, like yeah. in terms of. Uh, like Roman Reigns is good. I love Roman Reigns. Super stoked about Roman Reigns. Uh, he's proven me wrong a lot with with this this run of. But I did for a long time. I was like, when he's a heel, it's gonna be better. He needed to shave yeah. his head, but you know, it's a whole different story. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, it's it's almost like imagine if Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, like, you know, they're the two maybe the two top movie stars, whatever, whoever you want to take. But they also faced each other in movies constantly. Like they were just against each other all the time. Like they're the two biggest names, but then they're also again, <laughs> Mission Impossible is always Tom Cruise versus Brad Pitt somehow. Yeah, you know that that's kind of what Stone Cold versus The Rock uh, is for pro wrestling. And we're if talking we got, like if we got three Brady versus Manning Super Bowls, 
yeah it's uh, you know it's the and they like because the the genius thing which we'll we'll get into at least in my opinion is like they they face off but they split and then they face off again and then they they sort of split like it's it's really uh, through a lot of like happenstance and like happy accidents and also terrible accidents like the way that they're able to take this thing and run with it is really really cool yeah, it was always inevitable. These two guys were always going to have to get after each other. It was even when they were wrestling other people, they knew that it was the day was going to come again where they had to where they had to hook up, and uh, it was magic. It was magic yeah. pretty much every time those two guys worked together, and it was a lot of times it was magic for different reasons. Like it wasn't always the same. So, um, let's start, Dusty. I have an idea. Okay. okay. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a great way. I'd also like to shout out in honor of this episode, I am drinking a Stone Cold Steve Austin Broken Skull IPA. Oh hell yeah. I bet. Okay. Okay. I'll give afternoon. you I'll give you this. I bet that The Rock he's gotta have stock in Starbucks, right? If he's smart, I mean he's, he's got the tequila. So he's he's yeah I'm not but I'm not I'm not a heathen you know what I mean right. so like the uh the the rock is a corporate man he's an investor yeah. now he is um pretty only... annoying to be honest it's pretty annoying <laughs> how much of a businessman he is because he was the goddamn Brahma bull right imagine yeah. if Stone Cold Steve Austin was like a business consultant for like uh for like <laughs> Pfizer or some shit right. now. I will say that it's still on brand. Like he works very closely apparently with the El Segundo brewing company for his beer, but that's entirely on the Steve Austin brand. It's still funny to see, to imagine him doing uh, like tasting notes of yeah. various beers <laughs> to get what he wants. You know, he's like that one over there tastes like I stomped a, stomped a mud hole in it. I can't tell you if that's good or bad, but yeah. that's just how it, ta- how it tastes. I'll tell you this. I was wishing I had walked it dry is, yeah. is uh, <laughs> what I was hoping for. Um, you want me to go over there and beat Bud Light's ass? You know he said that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good beer, by the way. Not a huge beer person generally, uh, but this beer is pretty good. I've had it before. I, I, I believe I did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but um, it's poison, so, Dusty. I, yeah, I, 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 uh, yeah. I, I drank too much the other night, so I'm still like. <laughs> now, you, now you're on the other side of it. <laughs> Yeah, you're, I'm like, you're on you're on Prudence's side. <laughs> I don't know how you can do it, do this, and then in two yeah. days I'm gonna be like fucking yeah. texting you, Hammer, bro. We should. <laughs> you think we can do like a, a, a d- disco inferno week? <laughs> Why? Well, what about Ricky Steamboat in '90? What's he up to? <laughs> <laughs> I need to know. Uh, all right, so a, li- a little bit of backstory. This is kind of how uh, I wanted to structure it. We've got Stone Cold Steve Austin because the the other interesting thing is there the lives and the careers of the rock and stone cold also sort of parallel. Like whenever you watch it, there's stuff to keep in mind. Like Steve Austin played college football at the university of North Texas, but then uh, trains to become a wrestler in 1989. He uh, is trained in Texas by a guy named Chris Adams. Uh, By 1991, he's in WCW as stunning Steve Austin. And he's a arrogant, long, long blonde haired, heel uh and he like he does pretty well he he holds basically all the mid-card titles wcw has he has a pretty good run as the tv champion has a pretty good run as the u.s champion um forms a very popular uh, and well-remembered tag team of brian pillman called the hollywood blondes but when you look back at their run they're not really together very long it's like 11 months or something like that where they're together but uh, while he's in WCW, he thinks that he could be the main event. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's wild that Steve Austin used to look like that. Yeah, just so just so everybody on the audio podcast knows, I am uh, on the YouTube. I'm pulling. I just pulled up a picture of stunning Steve Austin. He looks like uh, Michael Bolton. Yeah, well, he looks like he could be in Highlander. Like he's one of the uh, henchmen of the main Highlander. <laughs> you know, like he's he's not Highlander. This is the whole point. Uh, like he always wants to be Highlander, but at this in this iteration, they will only let him be the Highlander's henchman. Yeah, and and, and okay, yeah, that that works perfectly. And uh, I'd say before he was the rattlesnake, he was a guy who looks like a, he owns a snake. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely into uh, alternative pets, like we talked about the other week. <laughs> a dog is not good enough for Steve Austin. Not interesting 
enough for stunning uh, Steve Austin. So is that uh, also him? <laughs> the, yeah, he had to. He cut his hair. <laughs> there Jesus he's a little Christ. bit. That's also a dude who owns a snake. Uh, Look at the difference. <laughs> All right, I, sorry guys, sorry yeah, no, audio podcast listeners, get, get on the YouTube, fuck faces. Uh, so famously, in '95, he tears his tricep, and while he's at home injured, Eric Bischoff fires him via FedEx. Doesn't even hop on the the phone the phone to, to fire him. Um, via FedEx, what is he? What did he send him? Just, just a bag full of dog yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're fired, asshole, and that's just fired. on one piece of paper. Yeah, uh, it's a firing by telegram is the only funnier way that you could get fired. <laughs> Stop, you're fired, asshole. Yeah. Stop. He, he's got headphones on. He's like, why? Oh, you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> then he has a short run in ECW where they sort of preview this uh that he can talk which is something in wcw he never really got the opportunity to do and that he never was known for but paul Heyman gives him a chance to cut promos because he's still injured uh and didn't so, he have didn't he have the million dollar man as his manager at one point ted, ted dibiase he debuts in the wwf in december oh, okay, 1995 okay, okay, my bad, my bad. after kevin nash and jim ross basically badger vince mcmahon into hiring him because vince doesn't see it he doesn't yeah. see a, a star and they're like, this guy has it like, let, let him come here. So, uh, he, de- yes, he debuts as the ringmaster. A wonderful, <laughs> what a gimmick, what a winning gimmick, uh, with Ted DiBiase, Vince, bro. <laughs> <laughs> with Ted DiBiase as his manager and he's the million dollar champion. And, uh, he runs like a whole series of house show loops with Shawn Michaels where they have really great matches. But Austin's like every night, God damn, I'm looking up at the lights. Uh, Stone, you know, uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to get fired at any point. So <laughs> he comes to them with this idea. He said he watched uh, a documentary on Richard Kulazinski, the ice, uh, the ice man murder. Yeah. The, uh, uh, a, a noted assassin. Yeah. Mafia I think it's... assassin. There's Kuklinski? A, I can't remember. I think it's Richard Kulinski, right? Yeah, I think it's Richard Kuklinski. Or Kuklinski, yeah. There was an it's HBO... some weird, stupid Polish name. <laughs> hey, Polish people, get different names. Yeah, there was a there was a documentary on HBO about him where they, like, interviewed him. And he's like, man, this guy's, like, a fucking killer. And uh, yeah. he's like, that's what I should do. I'm going to be this guy. So he shaves his head. I'm going to murder Vince yeah. McMahon. <laughs> Savio Vega, you're next. Uh, <laughs> so he, he shaves his head. He goes to WWE... To the creative and is like i'd like a more sort of cold-blooded character um that's like you know this unfeeling sort of assassin guy so the 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 creative services at wwe come up with like a hundred names for him but they're all like ice-based puns so it's like chili mr Mc- ice <laughs> chili mcfreeze was one uh apparently uh, like free <laughs> there, there's a million terrible ones and mick foley in his book has a great thing where he's like the gimmick matters because all the rest of it could be the same the glass breaking the flipping people off the stone cold stunner all of that if his name is chili mcfreeze that dude's never getting over that imagine not that the champ. <laughs> imagine that oh, but god it's mcfreeze <laughs> And and from the crowd with a chair, it's yeah. by God, Chili McFreeze. It's Chili McFreeze. <laughs> uh, so he uh, he switches to Stone Cold Steve Austin in March of 96. And through a, a turn of events, he becomes the King of the Ring winner in 1996 when he wasn't who, supposed to be. It's supposed to be came, Triple H. Did he come up with Stone Cold Steve Austin? Uh, like his Stone wife Cold? did at the time. God she, damn. <laughs> she was British and the story goes that he was going to that she had made him some tea and he, she said drink your tea before it gets stone cold. And he was like wait a second. <laughs> was like god damn it. Hold on. Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm going to cover my mic really quick. Yeah. He ended up hitting that wife, didn't he? <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. That's later. There's a wife so, he hasn't hit. Okay. There's a little story for later. Well, unconfirmed. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny in my research. Uh so he wins the King of the Ring instead of Triple H because Triple H was in something called the Curtain Call, fucked him up. <laughs> but we get Steve Austin. And, I, yeah, and he... real quick on the Curtain Call. Basically, yeah. uh, when Nash and Hall left WWE, uh, Triple H came out with Nash and Hall. Who's the fourth one? There was a fourth one, wasn't there? Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels, yeah. How could I forget? Yeah. Uh, but 
and and they came out and uh, it was a group. It was a couple of heels and a couple of baby faces, right? And they come yeah. out and they like they hug and they're like saying goodbye to their friend. Uh, as as Jim Cornette puts it, absolutely exposing the business in front of everybody and yeah, shitting uh, on the business. Yeah. So, so Nash and Hall can't get uh, can't get punished because they're going to WCW. Shawn Michaels can't get punished because he's the top guy and the champ at the time, right? Yes. So and then, Triple H so, has got to shovel all that shit. <laughs> facing the doo-doo uh, yeah. goes to Triple H, who was going to be King of the Ring. Yeah. So at that King of the Ring, Steve Austin beats Jake the Snake Roberts in the finals uh, and cuts one of the all-time great promos of all time. You sit there, you thump your Bible, you say your Psalms, and it didn't get you nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Austin three John three six. Uh, you talk about your John three sixteen. Austin three sixteen says, "I just whip your ass." So, fantastic. Uh, yeah, and that's it the is. bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Both of those in the same promo. Uh, I love. Uh, for, first of all, uh, I, Stone Cold was was very good at coming up with uh, those things, and so was The Rock. And I think yeah. that's part of what was going on the the, the phrases, right? Um, I hate what I'm over it. Yeah. I'm all out on what, what <laughs> ruins promos. People have to go weird cadences when they talk because the whole crowd crowd is chanting. What I will never in my life participate in a what chant. I don't know. Stone cold's <laughs> in the building. I might, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, just Austin three sixteen is just about as freaking good as it gets. Yeah. That's, I mean, it sold a gabillion t-shirts. Black shirt, white font, Austin three sixteen. That's have that's you ever all. had one? No, my, you, you think my mom's gonna yeah, let me put an Austin three sixteen shirt the, in the house? You you know it's a funny a funny Stone Cold phrase is, and that's all I've got to say about that <laughs> yeah. because it's just Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he just hey. stole that from Forrest Gump. Well, he's like the second he embraces, oh, I'm this dude from Texas. Like it takes it takes off. Like he's not pretending to be anything. He's not, he's just like uh, running his character through the real person that he is. And yeah. I'm the, I'm the ton of toughest son of a bitch alive <laughs> and I yeah. have no allegiances to anybody but me. Yeah. And I'm going to, and I will win. That's it. I'm yeah. like, so uh, in the fall of 96, he starts his feud with Brett, the Hitman Hart, Uh And then eventually with the heart foundation that runs him essentially through the end of 96 and most of 1997, including at SummerSlam 1997, where he was what, Andrew? Uh, too goddamn low. Too low. Uh, gets power drived by Owen Hart uh, and injured. We did a whole deep dive on 1997. That was our first thing we did on this podcast. You can go back and listen to those episodes uh, and compare and contrast. Have we gotten better? Is it worse? Who knows? You know? Who cares? Who cares? Uh, the the uh, the Bret Hart feud was also one of the greatest feuds ever, in my opinion. I, yes, the contrast uh, of personalities in that feud <laughs> and like of priorities within their characters was incredible. Yeah. So Austin has to take some time off, but that's also where the Stone Cold character really starts to take off because he's he can't wrestle, but he's on the TV show every week, just raising hell and causing problems. And, uh, <laughs> Stone Cold stuttering. The uh, Sergeant Slaughter and the Briscoes and all these guys like and cutting promos. So really, I mean, I'm sure if you ask Steve Austin, he would rather have not been pallor drived by Owen Hart and almost and killed. killed. <laughs> but yeah. it really did help his his character at the time. So he returns at Survivor Series 97 uh, about four months later, beats Owen Hart in his comeback match to win the IC title. That's where we're at with Steve Austin when we start our our deep dive. Um, okay alternatively the rock uh grows up his dad and his grandfather are both wrestlers high chief peter maivia and rocky johnson rocky johnson one half of the first african-american tag team to win the wwf tag team titles i believe in the 1980s not a great look for uh for the <laughs> wwf but... yeah the reason it's not a great look <laughs> wwf's been around for a while at that yeah. time <laughs> uh, soul man rocky johnson uh was a, a pretty famous mid carter did a lot of wrestling. Uh, the Rock wanted to play football. So the Rock goes to college at the University of Miami as a defensive tackle. Unfortunately, he plays behind first Russell Maryland, uh, who was the number one pick of the 19- of by the Dallas Cowboys in the draft that he came out in. So pretty good. 
Uh, yeah. And then secondly, plays behind Warren Sapp. Heard of him uh, at the <laughs> University of Miami. So Rock doesn't get a ton of playing time. He does win. He, does, he is part of the national championship team that wins in 1991. So he's got a ring, but like he, he just didn't get to play a lot because he's up against literally two generational talents at his position. Yeah, that's so. why they always tell you, go where you can play. Like, uh, <clears throat> I know probably The Rock wanted to go to Miami and all that stuff, and it was a great team to be on. He won a natty. But uh, go, if anybody out there is an aspiring college athlete at 35, which is our normal demo, uh, go where you can play. Don't get behind Warren Sapp. <laughs> right. Well, and The Rock in his book was like, I thought that I was good enough to play. He's like, a, yeah. you know, and then turns out there's a le- there are levels to this shit, as they always say. Yeah. Uh, so he goes undrafted in the NFL draft and plays a couple of seasons in the Canadian Football League but before he washes out of football. So think about this. In 1996, he reaches out to his dad to start training to be a wrestler. <clears throat> and, and he immediately gets, uh, like, he gets tryout matches with the WWF. He gets a tryout match against the Brooklyn Brawler, against Owen Hart, and against Chris Candido in dark matches. He has virtually no training at all. Yeah. Um, and so he goes to Memphis, Tennessee, to one of their territories for the summer. By the end of the summer, WWE offers him a contract. He debuts at the Survivor Series in 1996. So we're taught, like, he is uh, just about as raw as you can get. We also did a 1996 Survivor Series episode. So you can hear our deep thoughts on The Rock's debut for that. What's uh, the... I saw a promo of him in Memphis uh, f- uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Um. So my fucking cat, bro, <laughs> is just... <laughs> He's just knocking uh, hey. paper bags off of my yeah. off of my fridge. He's he like, thought about knocking my uh, toaster down a second ago, and I would have had to kill him. But um, <laughs> the uh, I saw I saw a promo from Memphis. Uh, so was that was before this whole situation? That was before, yes. Yeah. So that's essentially he spends the summer sort of getting the basic wrestling school training. Uh, if you thought Rocky Maivia is a bad name, how does the name Flex Cavana hit you? <laughs> Yeah, Lex Cavana's <laughs> tough. That's it's, uh, no good. And he he looked a little like he still he had super like a baby face. Like yeah, not wrestling term baby face. He he had a baby's face. Yeah. Uh, and and it was the same when he came out as Rocky Maivia with his fucking tribe. But wasn't he wearing like plants? <laughs> he was wearing like <laughs> not plants, but it was sort of like a like fire dancer kind of, uh, outfit, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But he, yeah. So he's, he's essentially got no time in the wrestling business. By the time he debuts in November 96, um, he, they give him the name Rocky Maivia, of course, for Rocky Johnson and Peter Maivia. But he's, I believe like he's 24 whenever he, makes his wwe debut like that that's insane to yeah imagine. He's, he's got really bad curly hair on the top of his head yeah uh, um, if you know the 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 fanny pack picture of the rock this is the, the that's the rock we're talking about here uh, is that this time yeah with the turtleneck yeah yeah well, that's I'm, uh i'm gonna pull it up oh my god <laughs> i mean guy. yeah it's that's just an iconic picture. That's, that's just with the with the necklace and the turtleneck. Um, so they they essentially fast track him as a baby face. So on the night that Shawn Michaels relinquishes the WWF title, uh, they to sort of give the fans something. They have Rocky Maivia beat uh, Triple H for the Intercontinental title. So Hell yeah, dude! February nineteen ninety seven. He's the Intercontinental Champion after less than a year <laughs> as a professional wrestler. So, uh, of course, the cr- the crowd hates this. Like, he's the champion at WrestleMania 13. He defends the belt there, and then he loses the belt to Owen Hart in April of 1997 and then hurts his knee in June. And so he's out for a few months because of the, the knee injury, and that's when they decide to turn him heel because every the, the crowds are chanting, die rocky die rocky sucks all of this stuff 
So he comes back and joins the Nation of Domination, uh, which what a fun thing to have the Nation theme back in my headphones. <laughs> oh, while man. I, watch this. I was like, uh, when the first time they show The Rock come out when we were watching and uh, that song comes on again, I was like, oh, I forgot he was part of the Nation of Domination. Like, yep. I hope we get a, I, I just hate that song. <laughs> God damn it. I hate yeah. that song. Uh, this might give you PTSD to our 1997 episodes, but whenever he joins the nation, he, of course, is part of uh, legendary feuds with the Disciples of Apocalypse and Los Bariquas. Remember those matches that we had I, to listen, watch? I, how could you? How could one forget? <laughs> how Dusty? could you forget? So uh, that it's not is... that it's it's not like I completely forgot that Los Bariquas ever existed. <laughs> you talking about uh, Jose per- Jose Perez Jr. Dude, you, listen, you could have said any Mexican name, yeah, Dusty. That's uh... you're talking about Juan fucking Vasquez. <laughs> um, so that essentially at Survivor Series '97, they have a match where the the Nation of Domination versus DOA. So that's essentially where the Rock is when we pick this up. You know, um, Mm -hmm. this is a head. This is after the Survivor Series. Our first clip is a YouTube clip where the rock it's labeled rock and Austin meet for the very first time. So Austin has returned at the Survivor Series to beat Owen Hart and he's in the ring and he's uh, cutting a promo. And then the rock comes out and I I'm interested because I thought he became the rock a little bit later, but I think you could still you could tell he's still trying to get his feet under him as far as Mm -hmm. being the rock goes, you know? Um, but I like the, the crowd is chanting Rocky sucks at him. And he just goes, you people are so ignorant. (laughs) Yeah. That was, that was one of the notes that I took. It's, it's, it's just so pointed. And, uh, and, uh, he, he does a lot of classic heel stuff. Uh, the rock is always like, you can tell he's like studied things. Right. Uh, but, uh, you people are so ignorant the way that he says it like that. And that's the thing about the rock and it's still true. And it's true of anybody who gets really big in wrestling. It's like one of the most important things, the physical charisma, like no matter what he does, it looks different than how other people do it. A lot of times it looks better than how other people do it. He's got his own style with everything. And even just the delivery of a lot of the things. One of the things that we're going to talk about later is one of my, uh, I saw like the, my favorite, the rock delivery of all time, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, and then Stone Cold, uh, uh, the, cr- the cr- crowd is chanting, you, uh, you suck Rocky or you suck or something like that. Yeah. And he, and Stone Cold goes, you don't suck because the people say you suck. You suck because Stone Cold said so. <laughs> Bah. Ah, well, fuck yeah. he said it man <laughs> like austin at this point and it gets even crazier but like at this point he could do anything and the and the crowd want like is ready to cheer him like he's the he could be the mayor of whatever town <laughs> that they go to every town. oh yeah yeah he, he represents a lot that was going on in society at the time like i don't want to get too in the weeds on shit like that but it's like uh, the anti-establishment kind of raise hell thing that was going on. Stone Cold is like the epitome. The picture pictures of Stone Cold in handcuffs, like screaming. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Is like that is the perfect epitome of who he was. Nobody has raised hell like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> yeah. And well, we're, uh, we're talking the Clinton years, the good years. You know, the good years. There's no, <laughs> there's there's no overseas war. The economy's good. You know, there's yeah. uh, post AIDS, but free, ni- but pre nine eleven. Yeah, we're pocket. talking. We're talking Clinton, about the pocket. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> post Gulf War, pre nine eleven. You know, <laughs> lot, big Woodstock ninety nine energy from Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> exactly. If you watch dude. that documentary, they break it down uh, pretty well. There's an angst, but it's like a existential angst. Like Fight Club is is also Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, yeah. Like, so. Uh, yeah, Austin says, you come out here and you make your little challenges. I got a challenge for you. Get a decent haircut. Uh, yep. cut fl- you're, you're a big piece of crap. Flush yourself down the toilet. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter. No matter how corny or hokey or whatever the line is, every line, he's, he's killing. He's, yeah. <laughs> like he, uh, and so they're, <laughs> this sets up their first match, uh, which takes place at D-Generation X in your house. <laughs> Uh, or well, I guess Sorry, in your house, threw something at my cat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, 
which took place December 7th, 1997, Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, 6,358 people in attendance. So uh, the, the, the interesting thing is the, again, there's a short promo from the rock before the match and it, and he's just really still trying to find that voice. Cause I think it's, it's obviously in there, but he doesn't know. He hasn't wrestled enough to know exactly what a heel should be doing, but he's leaning he, into being an asshole. He's just going really deep with his voice. Hold oh, on, you know, like yeah. he's getting trying to get deep with his voice. He's being very pointed. He's still got the charisma, but we'll see throughout this entire time when he he slowly finds the Rock's cadence because the Rock's cadence is the da, 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 like the really fast like yeah. oh you I'm gonna fight you tonight yeah you know, that type of thing <laughs> and like. Uh, the 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 uh, the uh, pa- the video package before this, where um uh, J- so Jim Ross, to be honest, is the goat. <laughs> yes, 100%. like Jr. He is. He's not like Moro Ronaldo in terms of his like uh his skills at like we talked about just now the cadence. And the tone, well, maybe the tone, because he got this like that iconic Jr. tone. But like, he could uh, tell us he was the voice of this era, which is crazy because he's like an old fat guy. But yeah. like, uh, he said, "Stone Cold belongs to no nation, no faction, and no brotherhood." Yeah. And uh, in the package, there's a part where The Rock is like talking to the crowd, and the the you could tell how hard they wanted to push him as a heel because. The Rock is talking to the crowd, and then on the screen, on the on the Titan Tron, it says Rocky sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so uh, so they essentially they start this match. Uh, the Rock and the Nation come out, and then Austin comes out in his pickup truck, uh, yeah. and then one of the more <laughs> iconic. Uh, well, like anytime you see a Steve Austin package, they're going to show you the part where he backdrops D'Lo Brown onto the hood of the uh of the stone cold pickup and yeah. breaks the windshield and then picks him up and hits a stunner on top of the of the truck uh and delo delo is dead yeah D-Lo, like he, at, he couldn't at the end of the dead. match <laughs> delo is still in the in the bed of this truck <laughs> yeah um they so he he runs around and beats up the different nation guys and then they have a very short match like the the thing that i took from this match is like the rock hits a people's elbow but they haven't established what the people's elbow mm-hmm. is yet. So there's n- really no response from the crowd. Nothing. It was but just like he does a normal the whole thing. elbow. He slams him, kicks the arm, runs the ropes, hits the elbow, but they haven't done anything with it yet. So he did the, the crowd doesn't really know what to do with it. And uh, he's not taking his armband off yet. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's the ticket. You know <laughs> what I mean? But um, this is, this is why this is the worst thing about this era of wrestling. Just the fucking Stone Cold gets into the ring, <laughs> gets the shit kicked out of him by three fucking guys after murdering D'Lo. It would have been four guys, but D'Lo is dead. And uh, then the ref, like as soon as the as soon as the nation gets out of the ring, the ref's like, "All right, let's start this shit right up." <laughs> well, that's all pre-match shenanigans. You know? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't uh, count if it's pre-match shenanigans. Yeah, you've you've seen in the UFC where the corner man and uh, the fighter and all his dudes <laughs> kick the shit out of the other guy for a little while, but until then, when there's only two of them left, then Herb Dean calls for the bell. That's yeah, the official put your, fight. Put your mouthpiece in, yeah. bitch. Uh, <laughs> now it's time. Uh, did. Real quick, yeah. the, the 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 chair to the head that D'Lo Brown took. Uh, did you see? I'm not D'Lo. Uh, that Farouk took. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that? Did you like? Did that kill him, or was that like just really well worked? Because like, uh, no, I mean, it, uh, Ron Simmons continues to live, but yeah, that's he was definitely uh, a, con- a concussed <laughs> after this. Stone Cold Oops. hits Ron Simmons in the head <laughs> with a chair. And Ron Simmons is the other side of Ron Simmons' head is against the Stone Cold truck. <laughs> yeah, he's got nowhere to go, and nobody. He's throws, like, <laughs> nobody throws a steel chair as well as Steve Austin. It's one oh, of the yeah. one of the great uh, chair shot artists of our of our time. The Rock, the Rock throws a pretty good steel chair too. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- so they ascend, they sort of tease screwing Austin here, but then he hits the stunner on the Rock for the win while never taking his vest off got his vest on the whole time um he didn't have time (laughs) no well this is because that they essentially did the same 
kind of thing at Survivor Series because they're not really sure how uh, well Austin is going to do wrestling because the this is like his second match since he came back from his neck injury. So they've mm-hmm. got this dude in bubble wrap. Because they're like, he's going to be the main event at WrestleMania. There's no goddamn way <laughs> that yeah. Steve Austin's not in the main event. So they're like, he takes no bumps. He he just comes out and does like gimmicks. You because can punch him and kick him. Yeah, he's uh, he does the Fez press. He does the stunner. He stomps a mud hole. Those are what Steve Austin can definitely do at this point. And, and again, they're like, he's so over. If we screw this up, like the 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 ball is downhill. The only thing that could screw this up is if this dude literally can't walk any <laughs> anymore. Well, and that might have like contributed to his success because it forced him to fight the way a Stone Cold Steve Austin would fight. Meaning, right? He's and and Jr. talks about it all the time uh, in almost in a lot of his matches where his matches aren't matches; they're fights. Yeah. and like it might that is probably a lot because of the physical limitation because he had his neck broken freaking you know yeah, but yeah. uh he he's not you're not gonna if stone cold stone cold will jump will jump off the ropes a little bit like he'll he'll he'll, he'll do that weird that super weird elbow he always does <laughs> yeah the, where he's very, like ah, 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 <laughs> very yeah the looney tunes elbow so, yeah, yeah. he's just flipping you off the whole way down <laughs> yeah um so then we go to a our next youtube clip which is stone cold relinquishes the ic title to the belt or to the rock so this is after he beats the rock and retains his intercontinental championship vince McMahon is slowly becoming Mr. McMahon. So Vince is forcing him to defend the title against the rock on this episode of raw. And, uh, or he will have, or there will be consequences. And so the rock comes out and then to a big Rocky sucks chant crowd really against the rock here. Uh, and then Austin comes out basically says he's not going to defend the title because he already whooped the rocks ass. So he doesn't need to do it again. Uh, and then he tells Vince, what, what are you going to do? You're going to fire me? And then The Rock goes, I think you should fire him, Vince. <laughs> and, uh, Vince goes, stay out of this, <laughs> which yeah. is very funny. Yeah. Um, That's very good. So uh, Austin says, like, I don't even care about being Intercontinental Champion. I've already been Intercontinental Champion. I've been the tag champions. Only thing I care about is being the WWF Champion. So if The Rock wants this belt, you can just fucking have it, bro. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which so, doesn't help the lineage of the Intercontinental Belt. Like, I'm surprised that dudes like uh, Cornette or some of the older uh, wrestling heads don't talk about this as something um, that they're uh, that they're upset with because it's bad to relinquish the belt to basically say I don't care about being the champion. <laughs> I I agree generally, uh, but for Steve Austin, it's, it's it Steve works. Austin. That's <laughs> right. the thing, like. Steve Austin barely cares about anything. Yeah. So like if if you can't have Bret Hart do that. Yeah. But and that really shits on the belt. But Stone Cold barely like I Stone Cold I'm surprised even cares about the 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 WWE title, right. you know, because Stone Cold don't give a fuck about anything but stomping mud holes in people's faces and drinking beer. Yeah. And uh driving uh, uh <laughs> exceedingly large and ridiculous uh vehicles. Yeah, and good. Uh, a very a uh, escalation of various vehicles. Yeah. My my favorite thing about this is Stone Cold in this little small era because we've seen we see it a couple like a couple videos in a row. And I wish he would have made this a little bit more of his uh, of of part of his repertoire. He just tells people to shut up like really quick, <laughs> and he'll literally like. He was, uh, he was, he goes something like, you know, I don't care about the IC title. All I care about is being WWE champion. And the crowd starts cheering. He goes, shut up. And then he starts talking again. <laughs> he tells yeah. the, he, the baby face tells the entire crowd to shut up. Yeah. And they're like, and they're, all right. And they Austin, cheer him more. Yeah. They love him more. Yeah. For, for his disdain, they care for him yeah. more. And he kept doing that. Like he would come out and he's doing like a, He's doing a promo on The Rock next, and he's like doing doing this promo. And the, the, when the promo, uh, the, he says something, The Rock starts talking. He goes, "Shut up!" and then just keeps talking. Yeah. Uh, it's so great. Essentially, he he relinquishes the belt, and McMahon's like, "Take the belt, 
to the rock. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's like, you got to shake Stone Cold's hand. Nah, it ain't a, <laughs> this is a it ain't a trick. Of course it's a trick. <laughs> well, no, why no, would it not it's be like, a trick? It's like uh, Bill Hicks always talks about the movie Shane, uh, where the guy, the guy throws a gun on the ground, tells a kid to pick, he's like, pick up the gun. And the kid's yeah. like, no, mister, you're going to shoot me if I pick up the gun. He's like, pick up the gun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, the, he shakes the rock's hand and then, of course, stuns him and he's like dta rock don't trust anybody and then he's like what's your intercontinental champion on his ass in the ring <laughs> to vince and he goes to leave and then he runs back in and grabs the icy belt and is like uh next week i got a plan for the belt that don't involve wrestling bring your camera crews and take a look and then vince is on the apron and austin hits the ropes really aggressively and knocks vince like onto the ramp from the apron because at this yeah. point, it's like he's not supposed to touch Vince anymore. And it's and so they're finding creative ways for him to still fuck with <laughs> Vince because the early days before their feud really takes off. So and that's what they used to do on Raw was like next week, Stone Cold will be doing something. Who knows? <laughs> he probably won't be wrestling, but he'll be doing something. And you got to tune in to watch it. Um, and, and guess what? I bet you will. And I bet you. Yeah, because uh, that the, they would. They would tee it up, whereas WCW at the time, mm. I think literally one of the main reasons Nitro was so popular was Sting might show up, and he might whoop some some NWO dude's ass. He might not show up, but if you don't watch, you won't know. And so, like, the two strategies are sort of reminiscent of AEW and WWE now, where WWE tees up their big segments, even if they're not mm-hmm. wrestling, like, in-ring related. They're like, next week, Cody and Roman Reigns are going face-to-face. And you're like, oh, fuck, I got to see what happens then. And AEW's like, we have a secret thing, but you got to tune in to watch it. And so they're trying. And it's always like, it's always like, we we signed Heath Slater. (laughs) Yeah, Mercedes Monet Uh, is probably going to be here, yeah. Uh, You've heard of him, huh? Yeah. What about Rhino? You guys care about Rhino still? We've talked about this. Like they, they, the only thing they got is surprise debuts before yeah. the inevitable fl- uh, flaccidity that comes. Uh, remember Keith <laughs> Lee? He signed one time. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Man, now. I was excited about that. Huh? <laughs> uh, so next we got <laughs> classic. Stone Cold throws the Rock's title in the river, <laughs> in the goddamn river. <laughs> So uh, the yep. rock comes out with the nation and uh, they, they have a funny little moment where Farouk's trying to cut in on what the rock's saying. And the rock's like, Hey, the champ's talking. So yeah. Uh, and Farouk gets pissed <laughs> and the rock and- starts calling himself the people's champ. This is the people's belt. Austin stole the people's belt, not just the rock's belt. When uh, I saw that, when I saw that interaction with Farouk, I was like, Oh, thank God he's going to leave the nation <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. So, the Rock demands that Austin bring him his belt, but of course, you don't tell the Rattlesnake to do anything. So Austin comes out and he's like, you know, pay attention because uh, I'm going to do something with your little title later on. And The Rock gives him a ticking clock. In an hour, I want you back out here giving me my title. and Which, again, is great <laughs> programming of your show. You open the show with the guy they want to see. Austin's there. And then they're like, hey, in an hour, Austin's going to be back. So if you don't want to watch fucking d versus one of the disciples of apocalypse we understand but at nine o'clock <laughs> austin will be back on this show <laughs> so uh come back for that so we cut to the rock in the ring and he's like according to the rocks rolex it's been an hour where's my goddamn belt and yeah. uh the titan tron comes up and it's austin on a bridge and he's like it's a beautiful night look at all that traffic but on this side of the bridge there's no traffic because only stone cold's over here and he starts yeah. Doing prop comedy, prop comedy to to rival Carrot Top. Uh, yeah, he's he's like, hey, look, it's a it's a rod and reel. You can use this. <laughs> he's like, uh, he throws the rod and reel over. He's like, I got some flippers for your ass since you probably can't <laughs> swim. Throws the flippers. He's like, here's an oxygen tank. There probably ain't no oxygen in it, but here you go. Throws that shit in the river, and he's like, uh, if what does he say? I wrote it down. Uh, Rock, you're the biggest piece of trash I've ever seen. Uh, it hurts me to do this, but I don't give a damn about you or your little belt anyway. And he chucks the Intercontinental belt into the river to a great response from Jim Cornette, who's on commentary. He's, not the belt. No. No. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then this, Austin. This is sacred ground. <laughs> and then 
Austin is like sort of talking to himself and he's like, let him swim out there and find the damn thing. If he wants it, I'll give a rat's ass if he drowns. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and, uh, Oh, he tells the rock, he's got a cell phone for him. He throws it in and then he's got a beeper and he's like, when you find it, hit me with the three, one, six, and I'll give you the big thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah. it's also very funny to me. i i love the, on the 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 previous one too there's the, there's the angle where he's like when your beeper says 316 you know you got problems and the, the fucking the rock is in it in the uh in the ring and he's like peacocking for the crowd at one point and he's got his sunglasses on and shit and his beeper goes off and he he looks at his beeper and stone cold standing behind him and he bug he's eyes. like oh no yeah, he bug <laughs> yeah. eyes out uh, yeah. yeah it's awesome so that's sort of the end of their intercontinental feud so for 1998 steve austin wins the royal rumble uh last throwing out the rock which is a nice sort of nod okay. to the future um yeah then he wins the title at wrestlemania beating Shawn michaels wins his first wwf title uh basically feuds with vince mcmahon dude love Kane and the undertaker at various points through the spring and the summer, uh, finally loses the title for good to Kane and the undertaker in a triple threat in September, uh, gets quote unquote fired. As you'll recall, uh, from mm -hmm. our, <laughs> our other deep dive that we've done, yeah. uh, where he then goes on to pretend to murder Vince McMahon in the middle <laughs> of the ring, uh, <laughs> and gets rehired. Oh my God, dude, that, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin dressed in not fatigues in like res wrestling, wrestling, uh, not wrestling in in hunting camo. Yeah. like it's like real real tree. Like he's camo in a deer stand. Yeah, with a goddamn crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> and he he kidnaps the boss. He holds him in a room. He holds a crossbow to his head. The boss is crying. Eventually, pisses his pants. Stone Cold drags him to the ring with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> points it to his head pulls the trigger and what is this what is the does it just say bang is it bang just one of those 316 <laughs> bang 316 <laughs> and vince pisses his pants yeah, yeah. vince pisses his pants and, and whoever like whoever came up with bang 316 if that was vince russo i'll give him i'll give him credit for that <laughs> yeah bang 316 is very funny the whole rest of that fucking segment is disturbing as fuck but yeah. Uh, so then anyway. Austin gets rehired for the Survivor Series, as you'll recall, which is a deadly game. It's a uh, deadly game. Uh, loses that tournament. There is a match with him and The Rock the night after Deadly Game that I didn't put on this uh, rundown because it, it ends in DQ. The most interesting thing is that they have Judge Mills Lane uh, on uh, from Celebrity Deathmatch. To, yeah. to prove the validity of the contract that Austin is submitting to get his title match. <laughs> and they're like, Mills Lane says it's fine. And, and The Rock's like, motherfucker. Contract uh, <laughs> signings are always ridiculous. <laughs> no, it's on the Titan Tron. It's like, they're like, that contract ain't worth shit. And he's like, well, I went to a judge and he says it is. And then they cut to Mills Lane on the Titan Tron <laughs> who holds up that Austin should get this match. So uh, then Austin loses the Royal Rumble in 1999. To Vince McMahon, he's eliminated by Vince, uh, and but I love that. He, like Vince, Vince wrestled goddamn. Uh, uh, who did he wrestle at WrestleMania 19? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but Austin wins his title match opportunity at the February pay per view called Valentine's Day Massacre by beating Vince in a steel cage. So that's Steve Austin's trajectory to WrestleMania 15. Uh, okay. And then The Rock, after he apparently gets his title back from the river, uh, is the last thrown out in the 98 Royal Rumble. He feuds with Ken Shamrock for uh, the WrestleMania season. He becomes the, not the leader, but the ruler of the Nation of Domination. Uh, kicking oh, good. Out, he kicks out Farouk. Uh, so, and then, of course, has to feud with Farouk and the Legion of Doom and all these uh, like mid card dudes for the summer. Uh, Listen, it, <laughs> don't don't call the Legion of Doom. Don't they're not the mid card. Ninety eight Legion of Doom mid card. Is that draws? Sorry, no, that's still Hawk and Animal, but they're it's it's over. I'm sorry. It's still Lod, dog. I'm sorry, it's no. Lod. <laughs> no, it's Lod two thousand. They rebranded. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> so then the Rock starts a feud with Triple H. 
uh, and has a really great ladder match to lose the Intercontinental title to the to Triple H at SummerSlam 98. Uh, then turns babyface and starts feuding with the other dudes from the nation and Vince, uh, as you'll recall from our previous uh, episodes with Vince mm-hmm. Russo. He's a huge babyface going into Survivor Series where he turns and joins the corporation as the corporate champion and then uh, spends from December to WrestleMania essentially feuding with Mankind and trading the title back and forth. So... Okay, so that's why Mankind is involved in some of this stuff. Yeah, so that's the Royal Rumble match where he beats uh, Mick Foley's brains out. Uh, They have a last man standing match. They have like a whole series of pay-per-view matches leading up to this. Okay. Uh, But, of course, Austin is the main thing. But that's if you look at it, they're kept apart all of 1998, essentially. Like they're they're on two different paths. Like Austin is the champion. But The Rock is on Ascendancy. They have him at the IC level. They have him do a big feud. They turn him babyface. Like, they're building him up. And then they have him do the heel turn. So you have everything positioned so you can do this WrestleMania 15 match. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You you put... You have Austin doing what Austin is doing. And then I bet there were a lot of smart fans that, like, as soon as The Rock joined the corporation, they're like, oh, here it comes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing it again. Well, and what's uh, well, they're doing it for the first time because they haven't wrestled yeah. the WrestleMania match yet. And so. what's crazy is at the time, the uh, Austin is still facing like legit main event talent. Like The Rock is sneaky moving up the card, but Austin's facing the Undertaker and Kane and Mankind in these matches that are legitimate pay per view main events. Like, yeah, they don't have to rush The Rock into being the main foil for Austin because they have all these guys that they can do while they while they build up the Rock's profile, which is also like a very advantageous thing for them to have had. Well yeah, and it shows you the importance of having a deep roster. Like that's I think sometimes WWE itself uh uh struggles from the idea that um from not having too deep of a roster, right? Because yeah. it's like it's been Cody and Roman like for a long time. Like yeah. Roman's wrestled other people, but it's been like uh, there hasn't been that like, you know, like you talked about Undertaker and Mankind and all these other like other epic feuds that lead into the convergence of the two feuds again. You yeah. know, so uh, where our YouTube clip here is Steve Austin throws the corporation a beer bash. Another one of your iconic <laughs> Steve Austin segments. So before yeah. WrestleMania, the week before WrestleMania, um, we have Austin outside he meets the beer vendor and he's like hey that truck full of beer like it's just what of course it is it says Coors Light on the side of it and he's like uh the the beer vendor's like can I get an autograph and Austin's like I'll do you one better I'll get you a seat in the arena and then they they go off screen and then it's the rock in the ring with the corporation and they're cutting a promo and it's you know of course the rock's gonna whip your your Rudy Pooh candy out this is the rock (laughs) in the middle of his he started the the catchphrases, the SmackDown Hotel, the you're a Rudy Poop candy ass. All of the sort of iconic rock catchphrases are now in there. If you smell what the rock is cooking, yeah. uh, the beer truck comes out and Austin is on top of it. And he's taught, he cuts an awesome promo where he's like, yeah. you got your nursery rhymes. You're, you're talking about uh, Know Your Real Boulevard, Jabroni Drive. Well, at WrestleMania, Steve Austin's going to check into the SmackDown Hotel, go right to room 316, burn that son bitch to the ground. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, the, and the crowd is just losing yeah, it. Molten, he, lava. He, hits him with, he hits him with a shut up during this promo, too. Yeah, he's, he's like, shut up, and then just keeps talking. And when he says, burn that son bitch to the ground, one of the, one of the underrated things in this feud is like The Rock's reactions – to Steve Austin's <laughs> threats, because like that's a stupid threat. It's it's not real at all. But he's like he's incensed <laughs> that Steve yeah. Austin would burn down the imaginary SmackDown hotel. Yeah, the audacity talked, to burn it. You down. talked about you talked about bug eyes with with the the beeper thing. The Rock just can't believe anything. <laughs> like everything that he that anybody yeah. says, yeah. he completely like he rea- <laughs> he he sells really hard. It really offends him. Yeah. He can't believe that they're saying like when they boo him. Every time he gets booed, he has a, a physical reaction yeah. to it. It's, and it's like, like a how dare you. I'm so great. How dare you say anything to me? 
<laughs> like, yeah, and and it, my my shit means so much <laughs> that when you say something against my shit, I can't believe anybody has the audacity yeah. to question my shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, then The Rock starts cutting his promo again. The only thing that's a little clunky about this is like Austin has to get down off the beer truck. He has to get the side of the beer. He has to get the hose for the beer truck. All of this has to happen off camera with no reaction from the corporation dudes while the rock is cutting his promo. So the rock starts to cut his promo and Austin (laughs) just starts spraying the ring with beer. Just, and Vince and Shane, the selling of the McMahon's, to the yeah. beer is it? I think Vince is swimming in it at one point. Yeah. Like it's incredible. Yeah, and we should we should disclaimer: the Snark Rock Snark Rocks podcast does not condone or support uh, the <laughs> actions of one Vincent Kennedy McMahon uh, uh, behind the scenes. We will acknowledge that he did wonderful work on camera. Uh, he is my favorite. He's like my favorite heel of all time. Yeah, but. We acknowledge absolutely disgusting human being. We hope he goes to prison if any of the things that he's that are being alleged is true, and we believe they are. But yeah. as Bill Burr, <laughs> when he's swimming through the beer, <laughs> as Bill Burr once said, "I hope they bury him under the prison if it, yeah. if it's true, and they can convict him, convict him all day long till the end of time." Um, absolutely, take all of his money away. Yeah, and <laughs> give it to Shane. Please give it. I mean, who, who seems Sh- Shane, pretty decent. Yeah, so far, man. We'll, uh, you know, future al- if, future allegations pending. Shane seems like he's pretty cool. If we find out Shane did some some shit, that's like finding out Derek Jeter did steroids. Yeah, like it's gonna. I, I think I will lose all hope in everything. But take all of Vince's money right now. Give it to Shane. If something else comes up, give it to Spike Dudley. I yeah. don't care. You um, know what I mean. I should also mention that the the 1998 Steve Austin run is also where we get all of the classic. He cement trucks Vince's Corvette. Uh, he hits Vince <laughs> in the head with the bedpan. Like uh, he all all of all of the clips you've seen of Steve Austin doing shenanigans. The majority of them are from this 1998 uh, run. And once we get <clears throat> once we get to a certain point in this, I'm just gonna read four of the uh, things that you told me to watch in a row, and yeah. it'll be a like a perfect epitome of like the craziness <laughs> that was this era in the WWE and that was this feud. Yeah. So. so that leads us to match two, which is Steve Austin versus the rock. Uh, no disqualification for the WWF title at WrestleMania 15. Uh, WrestleMania 15 took place March 28th, 1999 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, which is where WrestleMania 40 is going to be. Actually, uh, they drew, 20,000 people for a gross of $1.4 million uh, and 800 people bought this pay-per-view, including my friend whose house I watched it at. So wait, only 800 people. No, 800,000. Oh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> you have to, that, that had to have been, I figured you were just joking and like nobody yeah. bought it. No, but like I'm like, it's stone cold versus the rock. No, <laughs> like... This 800,000 is an incredible buy rate. Uh, oh yeah. And the uh, especially considering this is a, one of the notoriously stinky WrestleManias of all time, one of the worst WrestleManias. Did we watch this? Did, we didn't watch. We have this never one watched the show. The okay. show is terrible. But uh, they so Jim Ross is announced as the guest uh, commentator because he had been out of action since the previous, I believe, November from uh, the first of his Bell's palsy attacks. So he had been off TV. Um, up until this point. So he comes out to uh, do commentary on the main event because Steve Austin basically demanded that they let him do it. Because as you said, Jim Ross is like, he's one of the main characters of this story. Like, I don't know that anything gets over as big as it does without Jim Ross's calls. And I have some Jim Ross calls (laughs) that I wrote down in here. Most of my notes are JR or Jerry the King Lawler calls. Like yeah. I don't want to backtrack too much, but uh when when the Austin came to the ring in his uh truck, J- Jerry the King Lawler was so worried about that truck. He's like, <laughs> I think it's a total loss. Yeah. <laughs> and and at, at the end he's like uh he's like, I feel like the, I feel like the rock one that should have been a DQ. Austin used that truck as a weapon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh so before the main event, Vince McMahon comes out because earlier in the show They'd had a big show versus mankind match where the winner of that match got to referee the main event and the uh, mankind won by disqualification when the big show 
choke slammed him through two chairs. So it's like they were trying to take mankind out. So Vince is advocating that the big show should be the referee. But here comes old commissioner Shawn Michaels. Uh, yeah. Pre Jesus, uh, Shawn Michaels, who's still injured, uh, still has the back injury, but he's been the commissioner uh, for a few months. And he uh, basically tells Vince that in the event that there's no referee, uh, the imaginary rule book of WWE says the commissioner gets to decide who the referee is. Yep. Uh, and he basically tells Vince that he'll kick his ass if Vince doesn't leave. So Sean forces Vince to leave and we get uh, Earl Hebner coming out before the main event. So uh, uh, one of the funny things in this match is Austin forgot his gear uh, for this match. So he that's why he comes out wearing a t-shirt. Uh, oh, inst- really? instead of his vest. Yeah. He forgot his stuff, I guess, whenever he packed to travel. Um, Hey, the rattlesnake don't give a fuck. No, yeah, uh, he, don't, he don't, he don't care about no goddamn WrestleMania <laughs> in a precursor to how many of these matches will go. They brawl at ringside, <laughs> uh, for a while, a long while, but, uh, the, the rock and Austin have like, they have an, an, an innate chemistry in their matches and they have like, big moves the whole thing is like trading or teasing the big moves they have because you can tease the rock bottom and you can tease the stunner really effectively in matches without Mm -hmm. having to do them a ton of times yeah Um, and and the crowd is so hot that they bite for literally everything like yeah and it's and they, they did uh up like up until this they had done a from what i remember they had done a pretty good job of protecting both of those finishers so it matters a lot if you actually hit the rock bottom or the stunner. I remember as a kid, if you got rock bottom, like you were fucking done, son. Yeah. Like you were <laughs> shitting your pants on the, in the, in the ring, you know? Yeah. So the rock does hit the rock bottom, uh, sort of out of nowhere, like in the middle of the match and Austin kicks out and the commentary does say that nobody had kicked out of it up to that point. I don't know about yeah. the, the true validity of that or whatever, but it, you know, at that moment it was the crowd bought it as a finish. Um, and I like, there's a part where the rock is beating Austin down here and uh, 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 Lawler is essentially like, it's over for Austin. He should just quit. And Jim Ross goes, the rattlesnake will never quit. <laughs> and it, yeah. it, it sort of unlocked something for me this time, which is Jim Ross is like a kid. You know, Jim Ross talks about loving John Wayne movies. And I think yeah. that's what this is essentially is like Jim Ross is kind of a kid watching a Jim uh, John Wayne movie. And people are like, well, John Wayne's done. And he's like, he'll never be done. It's a little kid's sort of uh, belief in his hero. Like the rattlesnake will never quit, you know? (laughs) Exactly. So Jim Ross had an undying faith and he believed in Stone Cold Steve Austin and he like bought into it. So like, even just like when he would just be like, uh, there's one where he's like, that's that man has the heart of an animal or something like that uh, later on. And I wrote it down. We'll talk about it. I think it's WrestleMania uh, 19, but, um, JR was so perfect at uh, innocently portraying what the world thought of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And in doing so, he told the world what to think about Stone Cold Steve Austin. And uh, uh, let's not like undersell the uh, genius of Jerry the King Lawler in all of these as a heel yeah. commentator. I'm kind of always um, poking Jim Ross, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. There's, there's a part in this match where I think like, uh here i wrote it down i think uh stone cold stone cold hits the rock with a chair and the jerry the king lawler says he should get dq'd for it and then uh the the, uh the rock at one point rock rock bottoms the referee in this match yeah and jerry lawler's like no disqualification no disqualification (laughs) yeah uh well and I, i just i hear jim ross with a lisp as a little kid, you know, the rattlesnake will never quit. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's know. like, yeah. uh, you'll never quit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like you said, it's a tough time to be a ref in the WWE. Cause, uh, one of the referees gets hit with a chair. Uh, another one gets rock bottomed. Uh, and the rock, of course, Austin hits a stunner after the ref gets bumped. And then the crowd bites big for whenever the new ref comes in and counts, but it's a near fall. Yeah. So then Vince comes out and beats up another referee. So of course, who comes to, who comes to our rescue? The Micker himself, 
I'm on my way. <laughs> uh, Mick Foley saunters his way <laughs> down yeah, to the ring. That little like hunched over because he's, he's he can't move his body <laughs> yeah, he's, anymore. He's, he's probably got up. one collapsed lung yeah. on his way to the ring. Uh, the rock bottom is hit again, but then the people uh, Austin avoids the people's elbow, hits the stunner with the flip cell. Of course, the famous <laughs> rock yeah. cell of the stunner and wins to like a resounding ovation from the crowd like uh everybody knew this is where the idea of like everybody knows austin's gonna win this match but that is not necessarily a bad thing you're you want to see the way that it unravels itself like how do we get to the end but the end is not necessarily in question because i don't want the end to be in question i paid my money to see steve austin hold the belt at the, <laughs> at the end of this goddamn thing that's what yeah. i want to see you know yeah and uh this was this has what I call uh, the curse of the the late nineties. Um, this would have been, I think, a five star match with all this without all the shenanigans. Uh, these people were uh, they they had the they had the crowd in the palm of their hands. It was like, as you said, there's near falls all over the place. There's there's hinting at finishes all over the place. I think they crafted a great match, but as soon as a referee got hit, I went, oh no, this match just got worse. Um, it cuts over to mcmahon and mcmahon's i'm gonna cry face <laughs> yeah is a, a, an unsung hero of this era of of uh wrestling maybe it's a sung hero because yeah. a lot of people have seen it you know what i mean uh, but uh at one point uh at the end i don't know if it was king or or uh or um or jr but somebody said has mr mcmahon ever had a saturday and it's like well now he has coming, <laughs> coming up yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the, well talking of unsung heroes what you uh what you said is lawler after the match is trying to appeal to jim ross because uh vince gets knocked out by mankind and mm -hmm. he's like come on he's hurt jr <laughs> he's like uh and mcmahon yeah, is like, like aren't you worried about your friend yeah he's like leaning <laughs> against the the uh the announce table he's all and he's it's selling being injured and just he's hurt uh, was such a funny <laughs> line to me. Uh, as you said, this match gets three and a half stars uh, from Dave Meltzer. The, um, which is sometimes the scale is interesting because the uh, in your house match we watched before this the 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 truck infamous truck match got like two and two uh, two and a quarter stars. So you're telling me this match is only one point two five stars better than one that was like five minutes long that didn't have nearly any wrestling in it. So it's just interesting. And they kept it uh, pretty tidy for this match. I think this match is only 17 minutes long, something like that. So yeah. Well, and it's yeah. Austin was, wins like at 1652. So the, like I said, that's all you need. They go right into essentially the middle of your, of your match, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, then, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not giving it five stars. Like I am not, <clears> but I truly believe had the had all the shenanigans not happened, this would have this was this actually you know what this was on its way to becoming the WrestleMania 19 match. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's it's so, and it's good. Like again, it's Aust good. It's fun. Austin is limited it. by the fact that he's injured here. This is he's still he's still dealing with the neck sort of stuff at this point. You know? Yeah. Um. So then. We are we next jump to a YouTube clip, which is simply titled The Rocks Throws Stone Cold Steve Austin Off a Bridge. <laughs> yeah. So as a sort of callback to their previous feud, um, The Rock steals the Smoking Skull uh, Steve Austin belt, his custom title. And he tells The Rock and he tells Austin to meet him on a bridge uh, and to to take it back from him. And we keep seeing little inter interstitials of the rock on this bridge and he's got a fishing pole and he's like, you know, you could go fishing out here. You would quote, probably catch a mutated freak, uh, freak fish since you're such a piece of trash. Yeah. He, he goes, he, uh, uh, you'll probably catch a mutated freak fish since you're such a candy ass piece of trash. <laughs> uh, and he's like, the rocks about had it. He's looking at his clock or his, at his watch. And then Austin's truck, pulls up and the rock goes uh here we go the rock smelled trash <laughs> yeah uh, and, and then and then as he's pulling up uh because one thing you'll learn about stone cold he is either pedal to the floor 
or slamming on the brakes every time he drives. Yeah. And uh, as he's pulling up, uh, so the rock's like, oh, the, mo- the rock smells trash. And as he starts to pull up, the rock gets louder and he goes, the biggest piece of Texas trailer park trash walking God's green earth. <laughs> and uh, they fight and the rock throws Austin off the side of the bridge. And then it's like, uh, take your belt uh, and, and go to hell and punches uh, Austin. And then a very convincing Steve Austin dummy falls off the side of this bridge. <laughs> it was very funny. Uh, into the water. And and the whole time, Jim Ross is like, Jesus Christ, no! <laughs> Not the rattlesnake. He's gonna kill Austin, yeah. <laughs> Rattlesnakes, don't, they, aren't, they aren't amphibious creatures. Uh, uh, and then the the rock throws the, a belt. Yeah, the Smoky Skull belt. <laughs> Further than any human being has ever thrown a belt in history. Yeah, this like, is a, when this I is saw a that shit fly, <laughs> he chucked that yeah. belt, bro. Uh, so that that the is the biggest that. piece of trailer park trash walking God's creator. <laughs> that's, and then they just start fucking yeah, swinging at each other. That's the <laughs> the end of that segment, which I don't know if that uh, ended the show. That would be very funny. But the next yeah. week, The Rock holds a funeral for Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin. So The Rock comes out dressed in a, in a suit with a jacket, no shirt underneath classy move of course uh, he's yeah. had it looks great a grave it's tailored well too of cor- according to jim ross he's had a graveside uh a gravesite transported to this arena so there's a grave yeah. there's a hearst there's a picture of uh stone cold and then there's a bunch of dirt all on the side yeah. of this arena at the rock's personal expense uh and the and it's funny it's like it's not that he got a a, a, a gravesite built for the arena he got one transported so somewhere out there there's a gravesite that has just been completely yeah. robbed of everything yeah. and and edna's gravesite is nowhere to be found because the rock yeah. uh the rock claimed imminent domain over it for backlash yeah. uh so who stole the gra- it was is the rock oh that's, okay. oh the people's that's champ fine. all right yeah that's fine he can have it. um the rock pulled up to this event in his new uh cadillac I believe yeah, I think was. it was a Lincoln Lincoln, or Cat- Lincoln Continental, Lincoln Continental yeah. I believe was uh and they keep mentioning the the wood which one of the, one of the great comedy bits uh that you're setting up they keep mentioning how expensive the Lincoln is forty thousand dollar <laughs> Lincoln Continental right uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh and <laughs> The the crowd. Always, is, that's I've, I've talked about this before. If anybody ever likes is talking about their car, and they mention how much it costs when they're telling you, unless they're like a like a rich asshole. But if somebody's like, "Yeah, my my wife was driving my thirty thousand dollar car," and it's like, <laughs> "Oh, she fucked this car up." Like, yeah. there's something bad. When you talk about the price of something, when you're when you're talking about it, you know it's yeah. about to get destroyed. That is the foreshadowing you need. Uh, I'm wearing my $230 Jordans, and you're like, oh, no, yeah. what'd, you, what'd you step in? Those Jordans are going in the river, aren't they? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the, the crowd, they're, they're booing The Rock, but there are pockets that are now cheering The Rock. Like, he's, he's so over because of the personality that now it's starting to turn. A little bit. And this is when he, this is like the era in which he's, he really found the cadence. Yeah. Like he started to be, and he found the persona of The Rock. Yeah. Um, the only, the opening line, dearly <laughs> trailer park trash. Yeah. That's <laughs> how The Rock opens this. And we, we're here to we celebrate here. the loss <laughs> of one of the biggest pieces of trash, uh, walking I, God's I, greener. I, I wrote the whole thing. We are here to celebrate the loss of the biggest foul mouth, beer swilling, <laughs> Finger gesturing, gesturing piece of monkey crap that has ever graced God's green earth. Monkey crap, funnier than monkey shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, monkey crap is great. I, I, I had to, I, I, I paused and rewound it after he said, uh, "Biggest foul mouth, beer swilling, finger gesturing piece of monkey crap." Yeah, <laughs> uh, and the the and uh, Lawler's great here too. He's like, finally a, a true eulogy. <laughs> And, uh, and then the rock's still talking he goes man this is a long eulogy <laughs> so, uh, and then he's like uh oh and and again lawler is baiting jim ross he's like austin's not gonna be here and he's like i guarantee you steve austin will be here tonight yeah and he's like the stone the rattlesnake would never miss a chance <laughs> to yeah. whatever so it's basically like he'll show up. I swear. Yeah, he's, he's coming over that mountain. He's shadow and homeward bound. You know, yeah, exactly. he's gonna show up. So, the Rock is like, since you aren't here, oh, the real question is, 
uh, will wood stove wood stone cold's ass fit in this casket? <laughs> Since yeah. we'll never know that, I'm gonna bury something else. And he unbuttons the jacket to show that he did not throw the smoking skull belt off of the bridge. He's got the belt, and his face, his smile when he reveals that he has the belt is one of the great heel moments. Like it, he's so satisfied with himself. And the sly like stance that he has yeah. where he like kind of slyly opens it and with one arm opens the jacket <laughs> yeah. and he's just like kind of slowly spinning in a circle so the whole crowd can see what he's wearing. <laughs> and Oh, it was perfect. So while he's talking, suddenly a monster truck shows up. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <Uh-oh. laughs> uh, who's behind the wheel where, of that monster it? truck, Andrew? <laughs> are they still in Detroit or are they somewhere else? No, they're somewhere else. They're, they're somewhere yeah. else. It's like, just Stone Cold Steve Austin just driving the streets in a fucking giant monster truck painted with his skull on yeah, it. Yeah, well, this is a monster truck that exists in reality outside of this event, you know, because it's got all the de- the Austin decals. This is like, yeah. he's, it's racing Gravedigger on the weekends, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Austin jumps out of the the uh, the monster truck and, is, and goes up to the dude that's standing in front of the Rock's Lincoln and is like, is this a Rock's car? And he's like, yeah. yeah, Rock told me not to let anybody touch him. He's like, all right, cool. And he just gets in the car <laughs> and uh, they like peels out and Lawler's losing his mind. He's like, you see, your champion's a car thief. That's kind of the kind of champion you want. And yeah. Ro- he sets it up, jumps in the monster truck. And this is Chekhov's monster truck. Like if you show the monster truck. <laughs> uh, well, it's also Chekhov's Lincoln car because yeah. <laughs> they kept talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Something's happening the- to that car. <laughs> Uh, Austin does a does a pass by the Lincoln and the rocks in the ring and he's like your ass is lucky you didn't run over the rocks Lincoln Continental that's a forty thousand dollar machine or what <laughs> and of course the, it was custom made for the rock yeah and of course the rock uh, Austin fucking smashes it with the monster truck <laughs> and the crowd yeah. is like I don't know the the hero worship of Steve Austin like he crushes that car. And the people are like, again, they would vote in mayor. If there were an election the next day, Steve Austin's the mayor of whatever town this is. He's He is he represents the anarchy <laughs> that we all think would be fun and we all respect, but none of us have the balls or the uh, lack of regard yeah. <laughs> to, to, to enact in our own lives. Yeah. So he runs over the Rock's car twice for good measure. Then... Yep. Got to make sure it's there. Yeah, then he runs the monster truck into the arena <laughs> and he's just and it's revving like, it. he's just revving that shit i feel like there's no way he's actually driving this monster truck because they have okay so they have i and, and i think we've we've seen this segment on the show on the show before we've talked about it because i remember this part of it uh they have a very strategically placed light inside the cab of this monster truck shining on Stone Cold Steve Austin's face. Yeah. So you are like, so you can tell it is Stone Cold Steve Austin in the cab of this monster truck. Yeah. But like, are they really going to let Steve Austin run over a Lincoln Continental twice and then drive uh, a monster truck into the arena with like six inches of clearance on each wheel? <laughs> from what so I like, I feel like there's a hidden guy somewhere. From what I've always heard, it's him. I don't know that that's, that's cool. true, but that, that's yeah, cool it's insane shit. if it is. You know, it's definitely him in there. Like he's not like <clears throat> they didn't do a switcheroo that they do sometimes when right. wrestler gets in, wrestler hides, somebody else drives it, wrestler pops back up. He, like yeah, we're not talking about a Stone Cold Hulk Hogan driving the monster truck on Cobo Hall situation, <laughs> exactly. where it's all wide shots where you can't see him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So then Austin runs over the hearst, so the people in the audience get to see a live monster truck destroy something beautiful, you know? Uh, then Austin yeah, hops. And, and, and the rock was like, even sad about the hearse yeah. getting destroyed. It's like, <laughs> Oh man, I'm not getting the security deposit back on this hearse. <laughs> yeah. I declined the additional insurance. The monster truck Paul Bear is going to kill <laughs> yeah. me. I declined monster truck insurance. Cause it seemed crazy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I should have thought. They also offered me rattlesnake yeah. insurance. <laughs> there's a I, thing. There's a, there's I a, bought the cement truck ex- yeah. insurance. There's a, there's a there's a button here for Austin Mayhem insurance. I thought for sure I wouldn't need it. Uh, so Austin's dead. Yeah. I threw him in the river. <laughs> like in uh, the original Jackass movie, 
whenever Johnny Knoxville yeah. takes the car back after he's destroyed it. <laughs> he's just like, well, somebody's going to have to pay to get this fixed. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the best, my favorite part about that is he's running away with a blow-up doll under his arm, and he just yells, F you! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See here, you decline the additional insurance. Yeah, but that's just paperwork. <laughs> so, uh, so they have a little brawl. The Rock sells awesome. Here, like he yeah. he gets ran into the the wheel of one, of the monster truck and sells that, and then they go on top of the grave, and Austin hits the rock with the smoking skull belt, and the rock takes a bump into the grave. No notes. Yeah, ten out of ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, loved it. And it's and it's it's not like you know you see most people who fall into graves in WWE because believe it or not, it's happened a few More times. Than one time. Uh, he. Uh, he doesn't fall like, and I, I don't know if he meant to not fall like normal people because it's very dangerous the way he fell. He doesn't fall like flat into the into the hole. Yeah. He falls like head first, like <laughs> he like tumbles into the hole. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm sure he ended up fine, but it looked like a dangerous way to fall into a grave. I don't know. I'm not an expert uh, at falling into graves. And then the Austin goes to get his beer cooler so he can celebrate on top of the uh, on top of the graveside from when from behind Shane McMahon busts Austin's ass <laughs> with a shovel uh yeah and then uh, and then McMahon uh, Shane stands tall with the smoking skull belt because Shane had kicked Vince McMahon out of the corporation after WrestleMania 15 so Shane is the Okay lead. I didn't know what happened yeah. uh, with the Vince thing because uh first of all did you notice that the fucking the the uh, the shovel just shatters yeah, into a million, into a million pieces? pieces? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, get a stronger fake shovel. But anyway, I think uh, that's because the Undert- uh, Undertaker hit Steve Austin. They had a they had a buried alive match uh, prior to this, and uh, yeah. he hit Austin in the head with the shovel and gave him a concussion. <laughs> So maybe they uh, were so like, like, if you're gonna hit me, you gotta hit me with a chicken shit yeah, shovel. Yeah, break shovel. A real one again. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, I was wondering because, as we'll see going forward, Vince takes Austin's side, and I'm like, wait a second, these are sworn enemies. These are cat, cats and dogs hanging out together. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, uh, Shane kicked Vince out of the corporation. Yes. So that all leads to. The 1999 Backlash, which was the uh, uh, inaugural Backlash event, and the first event to not have In Your House in front of it. Retired up in the rafters In Your House. Because it it would have been called In Your House Backlash, but now they just call them like Backlash or Judgment Day or whatever bullshit they they come up with. They got rid of the In Your House branding. So is In Your House the like non-big, big The non-big events, yeah. We're yeah. called in your house, whatever, you know, colon. And were they still pay-per-views? Still pay-per-views, yeah. The, yeah. Um, so this is the, like, for a long time, Backlash was sort of the, the it's the event after WrestleMania, so they do a lot of WrestleMania rematches. And generally, the Backlash matches were considered to be better matches. Um, Because they're sort of mm-hmm. like away from the spectacle of WrestleMania and the time constraints and, like, you have another month to build the story and all of that. So this match is Stone Cold versus The Rock. No disqualification again, but this time Shane McMahon, special referee. Uh, out of Providence, Rhode Island, 10,000 people in attendance. And this did a 400,000 buy rate, which is half of WrestleMania. But for a non-Big Five pay-per-view, still pretty good. I would say. Yeah, for what would have been an in your house, that's 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 legit. I mean, yeah. that's like twice a Mighty Mouse pay per view <laughs> for the UFC, yeah. you know? Uh so we start backstage with Vince, who's with Stephanie McMahon, who at this point the storyline like the 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 sort of cresting storyline over the rock versus Austin is the Undertaker is now like an evil preacher, <laughs> demon man, uh, and he wants to make Stephanie McMahon his like evil bride. So he's trying to kidnap <laughs> Stephanie all the time. Uh, that's a, that's just the the. This is so like late nineties WWE. Yeah. You've got one of the hottest, best feuds of all time having one of its installations installments. I mean, uh, you've got this crazy uh, cast. You've got the the roster that they had at the time was unbelievable, but. <laughs> 
one of your top stars, one of the most iconic people of all time, is doing a crazy preacher angle in which he wants to kidnap the boss's daughter to be his uh, his bride. Yeah, his non-consensual <laughs> bride. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and the guy who's doing it is now not uh, like figuratively an, an undertaker. He's literally a demon. He's a demon yeah. man <laughs> with demon powers. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought that I I felt a bigger pop for The Rock when The Rock's coming out here. Um, that it might have just been when I was listening to it, or it's at least close. Like it's yeah, like peop- it's it's people are turning The Rock. Yeah, and uh, it's it, because it's just so entertaining. I think yeah. I think a lot of times you. Uh, a heel can entertain himself babyface and then the 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 company is faced with a decision you know what do you do in this yeah. case but if stone cold steve austin didn't get the best initial pop he this is one of my favorite wrestling entrances of all time uh because he just wants to get his goddamn hands on this <laughs> motherfucker so yeah. he uh the you know uh uh glass shatters he starts walking a little bit to the ring, and then he just starts running. And he he has a belt. The Rock has Stone Cold's belt, but Vince had given Stone Cold a belt, yeah. right? Like so, he has a physical belt, and he runs towards the ring, and he chucks the belt <laughs> over the ring, yeah. and it lands on like it was perfect. It lands on like the backside of the ring and slides under the ropes, while Stone Cold himself slides under the ropes and just gets after yeah. it, and they just start wailing on each other. It was one of my favorite entrances ever. Uh, and Andrew, guess what? They brawl on the floor. Uh, yep. <laughs> for a long time, The Rock hits a rock bottom through the Spanish announce table, which uh, at WrestleMania 15, Austin did an elbow drop through the Spanish announce table, which looked okay, but wasn't great. The rock bottom is one of your all-time through the Spanish announce table moves. Yeah. Uh, it looks awesome, yeah, and the perfect. table explodes. <laughs> and it's very it's very easy to control, like, where the person lands. Yeah. Uh so you can hit it in the exact spot where it needs to. Because a lot of times you see them hit like kind of off center and the energy doesn't displace enough to take the, the announce table apart. Yeah. Um, the rock bottom, yeah, is one of the perfect yeah, ones. It looks like, it's like the, the test footage from, from, the Trinity, the... Uh, t- from the Trinity bomb. <laughs> yeah, where was... Everything's gone. Yeah. Uh, then the rock gets on the headset and starts talking shit. And then he grabs a camera. And one of the, one of the best bits of all time. He's got Austin yeah, on but... the table. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so the, the there's there's the 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 rock bottom and uh, through the table. Uh, th- this is when we get the classic Jr. My God in heaven, <laughs> and then uh, and then uh, when the rock puts the headset on, he starts off with like he's talking while he puts the headset on, and as soon as he gets the headset on, he looks over at Stone Cold. He goes, "The Rock hates you." <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't remember what he says after that. And uh, Jerry Lawler goes, "I didn't know the Rock spoke Spanish so fluently." <laughs> and then we get yeah, to uh, so, uh, the uh, then the Rock, Rock grabs camera. a camera, and Lawler's like, "He's multi talented." Uh, yeah, he's got Austin yeah. on the English announce table, and he's filming him. Yeah. But then he he goes to film the crowd, and of yeah. course, when he comes back, Austin's right in the camera lens, and they go to the wide shot. Hits him with the stunner while the Rock has the camera on his shoulder, uh, and you hear the Rock go. The the Rock's like all these uh, all these millions of people watching me beat this guy's candy, and he gets over, and it's uh, it's Stone Cold flipping him off double birds, and the Rock just goes, "Oh shit!" and gets stunner. Uh, the stunner not as good a table uh, move, uh, but the table no. the table still breaks. Uh, and this is where Jim Ross says, this carnage is ungodly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we get back in the ring. Uh, there are referee shenanigans where uh, Austin gets pushed into Shane and then gets hit with a rock bottom. And uh, Because the stipulation is if if Austin oh. lays a hand on Shane, he's going to get DQ'd. Yeah. So they keep teasing like the uh, Austin bumping into Shane or Shane like – uh, doing something to Austin. Austin wants to beat his ass, and, uh, but he can't. And yeah. So, so then uh, Shane sets up for The Rock. The Rock is holding Austin, and Shane has the belt. And of course, Austin moves, and Shane hits The Rock. And then uh, the <laughs> Austin covers him, and uh, uh, Shane counts to two, and of course, flips Austin off and goes to run off. 
Uh, it was one, two, and then he goes, fuck you! Yeah, double with burns. Those fingers. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then Vince comes out uh, and hits Shane with the smoking skull belt. Because uh, also Shane had t- had taken the belt and was like, take this to my office backstage. Yeah. Uh, Vince hits Shane with the belt. Earl Hebner comes out. It, Austin And hits, it cuts uh, to Austin. Oh, yeah. It, so, yeah, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There's a lot of funny things yeah. in this. Uh, so Shane hits, uh, I mean, uh, Vince hits Shane with the belt. And it cuts to Austin, and Austin's, like, on the ropes, like, looking out towards the ramp where they were. Yeah. And it cuts to Austin, and Austin goes, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it. You can see him mouth, yeah. it. it was great. Uh, and so then Earl Hebner comes out. Austin hits a stunner and a belt shot, and Earl Hebner counts him down for the win. Steve Austin wins this match. Again, not too long, 17 minutes, 7 seconds. This gets four and a half stars from Meltzer, which, again... I think without shenanigans, this might hit five star because like the chemistry between Austin and the rock in the ring is incredible. And the story is so good. But part of the story is the shenanigans. You have to have shenanigans for it to work. Yeah. You know? And and shenanigans inherently make a match worse, in my opinion, like yeah. even because because the shenanigans, if you think about it, always the, the, always uh, favor the heel, almost at least almost always. Yeah. So like. When we are at WrestleMania, and uh, uh, by the way, we went to WrestleMania last the, year. If, if you guys the granddaddy. Know, went to the goddamn, yeah. the granddaddy. Um, I watched the uh, th- this part of the Cody versus Roman match the other day, and we're sitting there, and we see, is it Solo? Yeah, Solo Sokoa. Is that his name? So we're, we're watching the match, and this is just an incredible match. They're going back and forth. There's near falls. It's just so much fun, and we think Cody's going to win. And then we see Solo creeping up with his hood on, hiding so the cameras don't see him. But everybody in the arena knows exactly what the fuck is about to happen. And it's like, oh, no, they're really going to do this. Because it's like it's the same thing with this is why I was really mad at uh, uh, the we I, I forgot to mention this when. Uh, at WrestleMania 15, when HBK bans the corporation from ringside, that's just gone back on. Like, just fucking yeah. Vince goes ringside yeah. and nothing happens. And HBK, I, I text you, like, did did uh, did they ever beat his ass? And uh, uh, did because HBK said he'd beat uh, he'd beat up Vince if Vince did anything. Vince comes out, does something. No, no repercussions. They just don't care that HBK told everybody <laughs> that the that there was going to be no corporation ringside. Um, shenanigans always make matches worse. I understand why they have to happen sometimes. It was a little too often in this era, but it didn't hurt my enjoyment of this match. So. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> did you stick around after the match? Did you watch the end? Um, I can't remember what happened. So the end. Austin's in the ring celebrating. They cut backstage to Stephanie. And they're like, okay, match is over. Get Stephanie in the limo. Stephanie gets in the yeah, limo. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. And the limo starts pulling away. And they're like, Vince isn't in the car yet. Hold on. And it, the 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 thing, the shade between the, the driver and the back seat rolls down. And it's the Undertaker. And he goes, where to, Stephanie? And she screams. <laughs> and then they cut. So the end of this pay-per-view is Stephanie is kidnapped. Everybody knows yeah. but Vince, because Vince is in the aisle way, just kind of like, okay, Austin's the champion, but like there could be worse, I guess. And everyone's like, Your your daughter's kidnapped, bro. Someone should tell Vince yeah. that that happened. Uh, so f- they, where, they, where to, Stephanie? So funny. Yeah, whatever direction that uh <laughs> that uh the Undertaker got on that was a little I don't know what like maybe his character was supposed to be like maniacal, like hey, like that, yeah. like fucking Beetlejuice. Was he Beetlejuice? He's, because yeah. like w- uh where to Stephanie is yeah. like way less like I just I saw that and I was like, What the fuck? He's was, the leader of the know. Ministry of Darkness right now. Yeah. And I, you can't, uh, I don't know that there's a way to dial it back. I think you I gotta go full Nicholson on that, you know. I guess that's true. I but I didn't I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. So like when I when I saw it, I was like, "What the <laughs> fuck was that?" <laughs> Braces on his legs. <laughs> yeah i I thought the I thought the limo was to protect uh, Stephanie. At first, I thought the limo was to protect Stephanie from the Rock because I didn't know at this point that Shan- that Vince was on. I mean, from Stone Cold because I didn't know the, that Vince was on Stone Cold side. Then. At the end of the match, I was like, maybe it's to protect Stephanie from The Rock. 
um, and from whoever else wanted, because he knew he was going to have to go out and do some shit today. Right. But then when he pulls away and he's the undertaker yep. with the, this weird voice that he's doing, and then he does the like the the like evil laugh. Ah! Yep. Afterwards. Where to, Stephanie? Oh man! <laughs> uh, oh man! So the next night on Raw, the Undertaker tries to have a uh, a demon wedding with Stephanie, where she's in a like she's in a wedding dress. She's on the Undertaker <laughs> symbol. Like it's like crucifix, like a crucifixion. <clears throat> Steve Austin comes out, saves her. That's fucking great. Of course. Uh, and yep. then Vince or Shane fires the rock from the corporation and the rock turns baby face. But it's so funny. Like I, we'll have to, I don't know. At some future point, we'll have to talk about this, but like no one but Steve Austin uh, and like two other dudes, Ken Shamrock and someone else try to save Stephanie McMahon from the, the, the undertaker <laughs> of the undertaker's non-consensual wedding uh, dusty it's the fucking dead man yeah. you say yeah save he's her. got bradshaw and farouk on his side who wants to deal with Every, that so everybody <laughs> yeah, that is true to, and well every, everybody knows stephanie's a little annoying yeah. maybe we just you know uh maybe it's just chum in the water a little yeah. bit just make make the sharks happy um, so after this <laughs> Steve Austin's feud is with the corporate ministry uh, because the corporation and the ministry of darkness form together on the first, there's a special episode of SmackDown in April, 1999. That's kind of a test balloon as to whether or not SmackDown will take off. Cause everything else we've watched up to now, the YouTube clips and stuff are all Monday night raw. They didn't have SmackDown. Mm -hmm. So yeah, April ninety nine. The corporation and the ministry join up together. The, oh fuck! Uh, and uh, so now they're together. <laughs> and there's this um, uh, mystery: who is the higher power? They have all of this. Like the Undertaker's taking his orders from somebody. Who's the higher power? How a higher power is the secret guy behind everything? Guy trying to kidnap Stephanie. Guy trying to screw Steve Austin. All of this stuff. <laughs> Turns out, you want to take a guess who the higher power was? No, this had like I, bets I, I, on the on the on the early internet. Like they had odds. Yeah. You know, Jake the Snake was like high on the odds list at this point. Like who who are they going to reveal? It was fucking Vince. <laughs> it makes no <laughs> goddamn sense at all. It's Vince. Vince tried to get his own daughter, Demon, married to The Undertaker for some reason. Uh, he helped Steve Austin beat The Rock, but only for some greater good to, you know, whatever. Stupid. This is so, this is so rude. Yeah, it sucked. And Vince reveals it. It sucked and, and I hate it. He, he reveals it and he goes, it was me, Austin. It was me all along. Uh, <laughs> it makes, uh, so Vince is the higher power. The Austin loses the title to the Undertaker at over over the edge, which is overshadowed, unfortunately, by the death of Owen Hart. Um, that's the pay per view that happened on. Oh Jesus um, Christ! But then Linda McMahon appoints Steve Austin as the CEO of WWE. Somehow, uh, I forget exactly. <laughs> so then Austin <laughs> loses his CEO ship in a two on one ladder match at King of the Ring against Shane and Vince. <laughs> Stay with me. Uh, Why do you agree to that match? Uh, who, who, uh, who pinned him? Uh, it was a ladder match. So the oh, you got to get the thing case. at the top. So yeah, how did he get hurt? Like, uh, what it happened? Was someone kept pulling the briefcase up every time Austin went to get. Every it. time he went get. It. Now you would think eventually they would re reveal who that was. No. Nope. <laughs> It was Jerry. Never revealed. Yeah, it was. It was Jerry in the uh, rafters. Uh, watch it. Check our check out our YouTube for the uh, so, the Sting versus Vampiro first blood match yeah. video where you get introduced to Jerry in the rafters. Uh, so Austin wins the title back the night after King of the Ring because his last ask as CB, as CEO entrepreneurial as ever gives himself a title match against the Undertaker. So hell yeah, he does. Uh, he beats the Undertaker and is the champion until SummerSlam, where he loses it in a triple threat to Triple H. And Mankind. He loses the belt to Mankind. Uh, okay. Then, in November, he feuds with Triple H through the fall. And at Survivor Series 99, they announce Steve Austin versus Triple H versus The Rock 
for the WWF title at the Survivor Series, because Vince is a scumbag, they injure Steve Austin by having him ran over by a car. (laughs) (laughs) But it's on the pay-per-view broadcast. So if you bought the pay-per-view, fuck you. (laughs) It's a card subject to change, motherfucker. If, (laughs) If one of our guys gets hit by a car, we're changing the match. So... They ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> uh, because he <laughs> needs sons of bitches <laughs> yeah. uh, because he needs neck surgery. He finally has to have. That's why you run somebody yeah, over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he finally has to have neck fusion surgery. Um, so Austin's 2000 is essentially he's out for most of the year. He appears at the backlash pay-per-view in April uh, to help the rock beat triple H for the WWF title. Then he returns to in-ring action in October against Rikishi, the man who ran him over in in another (laughs) truly flaccid reveal. Who could it be? Oh, it's Rikishi. (laughs) Of course it is. Uh, That's one thing that the WWE is not uh, short on, is flaccid reveals throughout the years. (laughs) uh, But Rikishi didn't do it alone. He did it on direction from Triple H. So Triple H is the mastermind behind running running him over but not the actual guy, but not the wheel man. Uh, so <laughs> he's, he's blue blood. You, you, you don't, you don't get your hands dirty. Yeah. So in, in 1999, the rock, after he becomes a baby face feuds with the corporate ministry and triple H, uh, like through the whole summer, for some reason has a semi main event match with Billy Gunn at SummerSlam. Uh, Haley had yeah. you. <laughs> Uh, and then that's that's badass. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Rock and Sock connection is basically the the fall of 1999 for the Rock. So okay. then in the year 2000, the Rock is a co-winner of the Royal Rumble with the Big Show. Uh, they go over the ropes at the same time. So Rock co-wins the Royal Rumble, main events WrestleMania 2000 in a fatal four way with Mick Foley, Triple H, and the Big Show, but doesn't win the title. Uh, wins has a series of wins and losses for the title. He wins the WWF title in April, loses it in May, wins it back in June, and then loses it in October to Kurt Angle. So Kurt Angle's the champ at the end of 2000 when Austin also returns. So now everybody's kind of back. We will at some point soon. I know you have an idea for our next wrestling thing. I want to do a Kurt Angle episode for the record. I would like to do the first year of Kurt Angle's career because it's one of the craziest, like, first years anybody's ever had. Like, right. that would be I'm fun. Down. Um, so yeah. 2001, now Rock and Austin are back together. Like, they're, they're, they're both back in the company together. And they're both baby yeah. faces at this point. So the Rock is one of the final four in the Royal Rumble that year. But he gets thrown out by Kane, who then gets eliminated by Austin. So Austin wins the Royal Rumble 2001. Kurt Angle's still the champion. So in the February pay-per-view, it's Kurt Angle versus The Rock. And you can start to see, you're like, oh, fuck. They're going to, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're mm-hmm. dialing it back up. You know, they're running yeah. it back. Of course, The Rock beats Kurt Angle in February to become the WWF champion. Wouldn't you know? Now it's Rock Austin 2, WrestleMania 17. And the build-up to WrestleMania 17, I didn't send you any clips because the video package before this match is one of the greatest video packages of all time. Like, they do the Rock and Austin can't touch each other gimmick uh, where they can't fight each other. And then they do Mm -hmm. the Rock. At this point, Steve Austin is married to Deborah McMichael, who is uh, a valet. So they do the rock is managed by Deborah, who is Stone Cold's wife. But the rock and Stone ah, Cold okay. can't touch each other. But then mm-hmm. uh, Deborah gets beat up by Kurt Angle because the rock's like, I don't give a fuck about Deborah. I didn't ask her to be my manager. And the rock and Austin's like, if you let something happen to my wife, I'm gonna fuck your shit up, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. And they're both baby faces, but they're teasing, turning on each other constantly. And I will give them credit for not doing the partners that don't get along gimmick where they have to become a tag team. And then they win the tag team championship, but they don't get along together. They didn't do that, which was a very in vogue angle to do at that time. They still do it now. I hate that angle, 
I'm so glad they didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, and these these two didn't need to be a tag team. They needed to be separate from each other with their own agendas and their own trajectories. They need to be stuff. antagonistic. And again, yeah. like we were talking about happy accidents, like of course Steve Austin getting injured is not great. But the whole year 2000 is The Rock being the number one babyface and being the like leader in WWF while they have their other number one guy recovering getting ready for a giant comeback so you have the rock truly becoming like a pay-per-view megastar like he, all these pay-per-views mm-hmm. are on his back can the rock sell all mm-hmm. these shows he's our lead baby face then you get the the maybe the hottest baby face of all time comes back from an injury that nearly ruined his career and now he gets to be the number one baby face so you've got a, truly a 1a 1b situation heading into wrestlemania like uh, one of the yeah. truly weird things like and Austin's been gone so it's ha- we're glad to see him back now the rock is truly a megastar and we're going to have the two of these dudes face off do you, who who were you rooting for i figured it was austin cuz it was in texas <clears throat> you know but yeah. like the rock had taken over like nobody quoted steve austin really at my at my high school you know, but like the rocks lines became shit you would say to people, you know, like I'm gonna whip your candy I was ass. The same way. And all, like all this, like people love Steve Austin, but the rock is the goddamn rock. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's I different. eventually like I, I wanted to, I wanted to buy a pair of his sunglasses. Thank God I didn't. That would look stupid. I wanted to, I wanted to wear Adidas track pants everywhere. Thank God I didn't. I, I, was, I thank God, thank God I couldn't afford right. those things. I would have looked so dumb if my family had any money. <laughs> When I was growing yeah. up, but instead I had to shop at Target and the, uh, and God shocks. You know what I mean? A, there's a isn't that, there's a song by Randy Travis called "Unanswered Prayers," right? So thank God. Oh no, it's Garth Brooks. Oh Garth Brooks, yeah. God, thank yeah. God for unanswered prayers. Some some, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered <laughs> yeah. prayers. I know the guy who wrote that song. So we've got Steve Austin versus The Rock, WrestleMania 17. Uh, took place April 1st, 2001 at the Reliant Astrodome in Houston, Texas. <laughs> uh, this show is gigantic. And we've done a deep dive on this show uh, Yeah, uh, as its own. 67,925, the reported attendance. 970,000 North, 970, North American pay-per-view buys for this pay-per-view. Like, this is it. This is the peak of everything there was a there was a gimmick battle royal there was a, there was a gimmick battle royal tlc2 happened one of the uh, you know holy shit um we we got to have another gimmick battle royal man before all these guys die you, you know back, what i mean yeah. we got to do but, it tugboat <laughs> tugboat's still be. around he was on a dark side of the ring episode the other week yeah so uh we covered this match in depth before a uh, few of the things i will say is they like they call back to the WrestleMania 13 match where Brock puts Austin in a sharpshooter and Austin's face is covered in blood. Like uh-huh. uh, there's a lot of good foreshadowing for the end of this match where like the whole thing leading up to this is Austin is telling the rock, like you don't understand how bad I need to beat you. Like I have to win this match. I'll do anything it takes to win this match. Like my career was nearly over. I have to come back and do this. And the, I thought like the wrestling's great. The crowd is insane. Um, the end <laughs> Vince McMahon comes out and aligns himself with stone cold, Steve Austin, who turns heel in his home state <laughs> in front of 70,000 people who want to see him win this title beats the shit out of the rock with a chair uh and wins the WWF title. This match is 28 minutes. Uh the last like 5 are just him straight whipping the rock's ass. Yeah. Like in a in a beatdown, a straight beatdown. Um Austin says maybe one of the biggest mistakes of his career. He says he should have been able to read the crowd. And he should have, uh, like, he should have stunned Vince that night after he yeah. won the title. To let everybody know that, like, I'm just doing this to beat that fucking guy. Yeah. I don't care about this guy. Because there's, the one thing about Stone Cold Steve Austin is there's no freaking way <laughs> he should be in bed with Vince McMahon. Yeah. Like, if that is the, the one rule. If you, if you stick by that rule, 
he's going to be evergreen. But the one thing he can't do is join forces with Vince McMahon in a, like, not just taking advantage of Vince way. Yeah. Like, to actually believe that Vince is a good guy or like Vince or, like, uh, to shill for Vince, which we'll see him do at some uh, later on in the promos that they do and yeah. stuff. It's like, I was I was watching this in disgust. <laughs> like, I was just as hurt as Jerry Lawler was. Yeah. Like, Jerry Lawler, and that's, I'm not Jerry Lawler, yeah. uh, Jim Ross. Uh, that, that's that's another element of Jim Ross in all of this. Jim Ross was the like he was betrayed by all of yeah. them, and like he he couldn't he couldn't believe what he was seeing. It was like um, later. I mean, we're going to talk about the Raw after WrestleMania right now. And at one point, uh, uh, Paul Heyman is like, "Why don't you feel happy for your friend?" And Jr. is like, "Why don't you kiss my ass?" Like, like right. this is real. This damn it. is <laughs> this person has betrayed everything about themselves. Like. We t- He's somebody we believed yeah. in. We talk a lot about this concept of selling out, which is not a thing that either of us believe in. Uh, yeah, it's bullshit. But the character of Steve Austin here has sold out. This is the epitome of selling out. And oh, yeah. People hate it. But, uh, yeah, at the end, uh, JR says, Stone Cold has sold his soul to the devil himself. <laughs> Why, yeah. Steve? Why? You know, like, and... Austin is say it ain't so Austin is uh, also often said that he thought he'd ran out of runway as a baby face. Like as a, as an old school wrestling guy, he thought the only thing I have left to do is turn heel. He thought that he didn't have a baby face run left in him, but I don't think he understood the crowd that he was up against, which like no one wants to boo you dude. Like you'd be as heinous as you want. People want to cheer you. Like, yeah. And that's the thing. It's, it's, every, it's, I don't, he, R- R- St- Steve Austin knows more about wrestling than I do. And he was there. So like, I can't be like, what an idiot or anything like that. Like, but I don't see how that character, as long as I'm sure he might've gotten sick of the beer trucks and the cement trucks and the bed pans and all that <laughs> shit. But it's like, you can find if you can't find some some something to make the crowd cheer as Stone Cold Steve Austin. I question your ability as a creative team. So yeah. like, <clears throat> it's it's like it, anything but Vince. Like it, you can you can make him a heel, yeah. but he needs to be a part. Like if you make him a heel, where he's like part like uh, even if you put him in a faction, like the head of of something or something like that, that would feel weird because he's been a lone wolf, but. At least then he's not friends with Vince. They still fuck with Vince. It's still on site with Vince McMahon, right. you know? Like, they ain't never going to squash that beef. But they squash that beef for a little bit. Yeah. It fucking sucked. Um, so that match gets four and a half stars again. Really good match. Uh, just in high – and again, like you said, in hindsight, you can see how terrible uh, an idea this turned out to be. But, yeah. but like, again, Steve Austin knows more about wrestling than I do. So he, maybe he felt like that was his only thing he could do. So they go to the next night, the Monday Night Raw, uh, April 2nd, 2001. And we start with a Rock promo. And the Rock is in the ring. Or, well, it's Vince, right? Vince is in the ring. And he's talking about WrestleMania. And he's talking about how uh, the night before he lost to Shane. Uh, but he he recaps the whole WrestleMania yeah. for like, and then he eventually gets to the Rock and us. He's like, "Well, all all's well that ends yeah. well." So then like, the Rock uh, comes out and demands a rematch, and now the Rock is definitely the babyface. Like the crowd yeah. is crazy for him, and Vince won't give him the rematch, of course. But in true wrestling fashion, <laughs> the Rock then yeah. whips his ass and puts him in a sharpshooter, and then Vince gives him what he wants. Next time you want to raise at your job. And your and your boss is being a hard ass about it. Just throw him in the sharpshooter. Ugh. That's what's funny. Like Vince just sticks to it. Vince is like, "No, yes, you'll get your match." Yeah. And, and then he just like holds him. Like he's got to call Austin. Is like, "Hey, I fucking did something." Look, I got in the sharpshooter. What do you want? Me, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Shit hurts. Yeah. Uh, so then we have the everybody tuned into this episode. I remember too because I'm you know I watched WrestleMania 17. I ordered WrestleMania 17. The next night, I'm like, what are they going to do? How does Austin explain himself? Because part of the turn, part of the important thing is, okay, if you have a good enough justification or you have a good enough reason, maybe that helps. Like, you know, and Austin comes out and and weirdly, essentially is like, I will give you no reason. 
fuck you guys. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't have to give you any explanation. I now love Vince McMahon, uh, and I hate all of you. And uh, you want an ex- uh, an explanation? Go screw yourself. Which is a great Stone Cold Steve Austin character move because it makes sense for his character. But to justify the heel turn doesn't make any sense. Like the crowd is still confused because they still want to cheer Austin, especially because they're still in Texas. Well, it's because there's nothing that makes sense with the Stone Cold character that he could say that would be like, oh, okay, I yeah. get it. That's why you went with this one again. It was like. It was basically there was good moments to it where it was like I don't owe you guys anything like yeah. I've given you guys everything you guys uh, 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 you believed in all this shit that I just did to rile you guys up basically and um, but yeah you're right he doesn't offer an explanation why and it's because you can't <laughs> within the Stone Cold uh, framework yeah. make any true just like any uh, believable justification for why he would be friends with Vince, Vince yeah. McMahon now. Uh, but if you want to talk about a great promo right before the main event, they go backstage to the rock and the rock cuts a fucking awesome promo. He's like the rock understands why you did what you did because after every stunner and after every chair shot, the rock kicked out, the rock could see in your eyes. You knew you couldn't beat the rock. You were, you, you yeah. were desperate. You were, you were a man who was, uh, who you were, you were racked with fear, all of this. You know, and The Rock owes you an ass whooping, and he's going to give you one all over the Lone Star State. Like I thought, this promo was awesome. uh, Yeah, heading into this, and then they do. So Vince's thing was he gets put in the sharpshooter. He has to give The Rock a rematch, and then afterwards he's like, "Oh, hey, by the way, it's in a steel cage." Bah ha ha! You know. (laughs) Yeah, and the the Rock like kind of just has a smirk on his face, but that's what's always funny to me about steel cage in general. (laughs) If if there's a surprise steel cage match. Because you know, a lot of fans showed up to the arena and looked up and was like, "Holy shit, there's a steel cage up there!" Yeah, like there's good, they're going to do something with that cage. <laughs> they're going to do something with that. So then they see this happen, yeah. and they're and like, I wonder if anybody uh, had 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 kayfabe broken for yeah. them at that they're moment. Like, well, they're definitely not doing Gangrel versus X Pac in a cage. <laughs> something yeah, big's yeah, going in eight, that cage. Eight ball versus Big Boss Man, probably <laughs> not in the cage. Is it going to be? Yeah. In the, yeah. uh, so they have one of the great things is they do like they're trying. They're they're trying hard. They have Vince come out and announce Stone Cold Steve Austin as the champion, but they but there are still people cheering Austin like the the in spite of themselves they can't help it. You yeah. Know? Um, and I thought that it's the rattlesnake. Yeah. <laughs> like this was okay. This is mostly living off the residuals of the previous night and the hype like this match is much more of a storyline than it is a real match like they do get uh both guys bleeding they get the rock they get the visual tap out where rock has austin in the sharpshooter and austin taps but the ref is distracted yeah. so then uh the you know rock goes for the people's elbow but vince interferes <laughs> the rock hits a rock bottom and then vince interferes again and so then the rock very funny the Rock just starts whooping Vince's ass inside of the cage. Yeah. Uh, well, I just kept going like, shut the damn cage door right. because they're fighting and Vince keeps coming in and interfering. And it's like, just shut the door. He's fine. And But The Rock got him in there and started stomping a mud hole yeah. in him. Uh, Triple H's music hits. Triple H comes out. I'll remind you, Triple H is the guy who orchestrated the car hitting Steve Austin to nearly end <laughs> yeah. his career. So people are yep. like, oh, shit, what the fuck's going to happen? Uh, and then the rock, and then Triple H turns with the sledgehammer, hits the rock, and in a great moment, uh, Jim Ross just goes, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then Triple H hits a pedigree, uh, Austin hits a stunner, and then uh, Jim Ross says, "This match has disintegrated into the depths of hell." Uh, yeah. We are witnessing the end of the uh, – Heyman says, we are witnessing the end of the people's dream. Yeah. We are witnessing the destruction of The Rock. Because this started off – The Rock was hot at the beginning of this yeah. match. Like, he was ready to go. He fucking he – was, he was winning. He was on point. I think he hit a rock bottom very early. And then and then it just slowly was like – because everybody was like, oh, wow, we're going to see The Rock. Like, get him back, and this, this is going to be good. And then it just slowly was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. That's – it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, and then they play Austin's music, but there's not a pin. There's no like definitive end to this match. There's just like the refs beat up 
the rock's been fucked up and then they just play austin's music uh and then the, well because it disintegrated into the depths the, of hell yeah, you you can't, you, there are no yeah. pinfalls needed in the depths of hell so yeah. uh then austin triple h and vince share a beer to let you know like oh now they're aligned together mm-hmm. right so the rest of 2001 for the rock looks like after this match he leaves because he has to promote uh or he goes to film the scorpion king the scorpion because the mummy returns has already come out been a big hit so they're gonna make scorpion king uh he returns at SummerSlam 2001 and wins the wcw title uh then he feuds with chris jericho and booker t um he does wrestle austin and loses at a uk only pay-per-view in november of 2001 Mm -hmm. so i didn't put that in here because it wasn't like canon for the u.s at that point oh that's interesting is it on peacock yeah i didn't even know it was on peacock until i look there's a tab if you want to follow all this there's a stone cold versus rock tab that'll that has every time the two interacted oh Um, cool but like they don't do what i wish they would do small small side rant like thing i would love they give you the monday night raw but they don't give you the time code of when it's austin versus rock it's like the whole monday night raw so i gotta watch the whole shit if i want to see what's going on um thankfully uh, thankfully dusty does all the research for me and sends me the the, right send me the the time time codes because that's bullshit that would be so much easier uh yeah well plus i have peacock with ads and the ads are so long so uh let's take that discussion off pod because i might be able to help you with that uh absolutely so then he he comes back at wrestlemania 18 and beats hulk hogan that's the big wrestlemania 18 moment um then he fucks off because he's got to go promote the scorpion king (laughs) so that's uh that's essentially the rocks 2001 2002 we're up to like may 2002 for uh the rock so austin's 2001 after this match he forms a tag team with triple h and they their whole thing is they're the two-man power trip they're the two biggest heels in the company and now they're aligned with vince right so they win the tag titles Triple H wins the IC title and uh, Austin's the world title, the world champion. So they hold all the belts, all the big belts, right? Yeah. Uh, They feud with Kane and the undertaker with the Hardys and with Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho. And they lose the tag titles to Benoit and Jericho in May. Triple H pops that quad (laughs) in May. Hell yeah. And man, it's it's bad for for McMahon and McMahon adjacent people. Those quads yeah. really really like to it's explode. Uh, so that fucks up their whole plan because it was eventually going to be Triple H turn babyface, and then it's Austin versus uh, Triple, Triple H, H with Triple H as a babyface, which I personally don't think works super great because Triple H for all his babyface runs, he's not great. He's great as a heel. He's okay as a babyface in my opinion. Um, yeah, but. That leads to the invasion, as you'll recall, WCW. Oh, one of the greatest <laughs> angles in the history of, of wrestling. So Austin not only turned and joined Vince, but then in July of 2001, mere months after that, he turns on the WWF and joins WCW. He's the head of the invasion. Um, so mm-hmm. then we see him feud with Kurt Angle through the summer. Uh, he loses the title to Angle in, in September, wins it back in October, and then loses a unification match for the title to Chris Jericho uh, in December of 2001. He's in the final four of the Royal Rumble in 2002, uh, but then he like ends up feuding with the NWO, the incoming NWO for 2002. Yeah. So he wrestles Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18 because he turned down the Hogan match. He didn't want to do it because he didn't want to lose to Hogan, and Hogan didn't want to lose to him. So yeah. we're we're left where we're left. Uh and he beats Scott Hall. But the interesting thing is he's he starts a feud with the Undertaker and Ric Flair. Ric Flair is now the authority figure, so he's sort of the in place Vince McMahon for this. Um mm-hmm. but Austin is not happy with his creative. He no showed the the raw right after WrestleMania because he wasn't happy with like his uh his storylines and stuff. So he comes back after that and is supposed to feud with Eddie Guerrero. And so they start building that. But then they announce on the June 3rd edition of Raw 
he's going to wrestle Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifying match. And Lesnar's brand new. Lesnar had just debuted. And they want Austin mm-hmm. to lose to Lesnar. And he's like, no. <laughs> he just, I, he's like, you have, he's like, I believe there's a pay per view match between me and this guy later. If this had been built up, if it were worth something, I have no problem losing. I'm not going to lose a match that was just announced three hours ago in a qualifying match for the King of the Ring. I'm Steve, I'm Steve yeah. fucking Austin. Go. So he bounces. I've carried this company on my back. Well, him, him, yeah, with a broken for, for... goddamn neck. <laughs> like, yeah. so he bounces. He just, he just leaves. And, uh, so that, that leads us to our next clip because Austin leaves and it's sort of coming out in drips and drabs on the internet because the internet still isn't what it is now. 2002 is a lot better of the internet than it is, than it was yeah. initially. But they're like, what the fuck happened with Steve Austin? So the whole, this whole episode of raw is Steve Austin. They're, they're teasing. Austin's going to show up. So Vince is in the ring with a beer waiting for Austin. And then a guy comes in and is like, it's not Steve Austin. And, and Vince goes, wait, the guy you've been telling me is arriving the whole time. Is not Steve Austin? Boom. The rocks music hits. And yeah. the crowd <laughs> is insane. This is the week after Austin had walked out. So like, I think it it had become internet news, but people really weren't sure what was going on. So the rock kicks Vince out of the ring and then the rock sort of fumbles his line. He's supposed to be the pie eating jabroni beaten, blah, 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 blah. You know, people's champ. And he, and he's so hyped <laughs> uh, that he, that he sort of fumbles his line. Then he runs it back, but he's supposed to That's... be doing a uh, promotion for the scorpion king. Uh, yeah, and that's something that happens. You'll notice with the Rock, like it's not always perfect, yeah. and uh, because and a lot of the time it's because it's not scripted. He gets himself really riled up to do his uh, his promos, so he'll like have to slow himself down and repeat a line to get him back into a line, and he still does that in the stuff that he's doing now. You'll you'll notice it, and that's actually what kind of tipped me off to it uh, in the past. But yeah, he'll he'll fumble sometimes, but he's still as goddamn good as it yeah. gets. You know what I mean? So uh, his iconic line here is. You know, if you're if you don't want to be here, everybody who's here wants to be here. All the guys in the back, they love it. They want to be here. If you don't want to be here, like the slogan says, get the F out, because this is when they're transferring yeah. from WWF to WWE. And the slogan was get the F out. Right. So, oh, that's why he said uh, yeah. that. I was like, why did he say that? <laughs> that's not a sl- that's not really a slogan. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the rock is supposed to be back on Smackdown on July 11th. But guess what? The rocks back at King of the Ring. Uh, and he tell you know, the whole, the whole thing here is they spend all of this time t- saying that Austin took his ball and went home. Like they make Austin out to yeah. be this completely irrational person who's not <laughs> burned out from years of being at the top, who doesn't have legitimate concerns about his, uh, his creative, you know, and Austin at that point was also involved in a domestic dispute with his wife. Uh, where he is alleged to have hit Deborah McMichael and maybe proved to have hit yeah. Deborah McMichael. Like, there's a lot of stuff. Austin's in rough shape, and I, I, th- I think he pled guilty. Yeah. And he, um, but he, he said he had a drinking problem or something like that. Doesn't just no. Okay. So, like, I never like that narrative because that's the WWF controls that. They get to be like, oh, this guy's this guy get, took his ball and went home look at what he did to all of you fans or whatever and it's like that's almost uh, but what are they gonna do they can't film an angle with him because he left they can't film a this is why austin's leaving angle and uh they can't literally say he's unhappy with his (laughs) with his creative and the direction we're taking the character of stone cold steve austin so it's like it's I, I don't know what else they're supposed to do in that respect, uh, but it is a very WWE yeah, but they're thing. Always to like, just shit on him. He, he gave up on the fans, you know. How dare he? Yeah. Out, you know, like there's a famous story where at the at, at the time they were creating these DVDs, like there's a famous DVD called "The Self Destruction of Ultimate Warrior," where they just fucking bury the Ultimate Warrior for like two two yeah. plus hours because they can. They have all the footage and they get talking heads to talk shit about him. And Bret Hart was also on outs with WWE at that time. And they were going to do a self-destruction of Bret Hart. And then Bret Hart came back and was back in the good graces. And then they made it a best of Bret Hart. So it's like (laughs) they control the whole thing. So it's just a little, you know, there's a lot of 
reasons for what happened with Austin. So uh, the rocks, then the rock comes back. He comes back early. He wins the WWF title in July. Beat, he beats the undertaker and Kurt angle. And then he loses the title at SummerSlam to Brock Lesnar. Smat like smashing Brock Lesnar over. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he takes off again. Because he's probably going to film. Was this the, the next big? Was that the next big yeah, thing? That was the next. The next. Yeah. So he's pro and he's probably taken off to go film like the rundown. I think so. He takes off. Mm -hmm. um, Going to go hang out with Sean William <laughs> yeah, Scott. Pretty good movie. Underrated movie. The uh, the rundown. I liked it when I, I saw it in theaters. Yeah. I liked it. I was a big. I was a big The Rock mark. I was a big Sean William Scott yeah. mark. I still believe Sean William Scott is maybe in the top. 15 american comedic actors so uh sue me so austin takes like seven months off right but he returns to the wwf in february of 2003 and, and he splits he splits his jean shorts on the way to the ring <laughs> yeah. uh, do you notice that no i didn't see that when he comes no. up when he comes back when he comes back he's wearing really tight blue jean oh, shorts no. and uh and there's a giant split down the back of him on the, on the, on the back That's pocket. That's a bummer. Uh, Very so funny. Austin returns, but before that, we get The Rock, YouTube clip, The Rock's promo in Indianapolis. <laughs> and this is for The Rock has come back to have a rematch at the February pay-per-view with Hulk Hogan, right? This is widely considered the debut of Hollywood Rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought this promo was tremendous. The <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. It, it the rock. It, it this is the only thing that annoys me. Right, mm -hmm. is the last two like for what we saw. So maybe maybe the context in the middle kind of softens this a little bit. But the rock gets his ass whooped in the steel cage, yeah. real bad, uh, by the establishment. Right, he then leaves, and then. He comes back, and when he comes back, super over baby face. Could have just shot him to the moon as a baby face, and they're like, now nah, we're going to make him a heel. Like, they, they just kind of, I feel like they forced that. Well, I think it, the crowd was reacting negative to, negative to him. Oh, yeah. were they? Well, in that in that first promo, it seemed like they liked it. Uh, well, because it was like. Um, they, they, were, they were happy he's back. Yeah. They were just like stoked to see him, and then it slowly But they're also wore chanting off, for basically. Hogan in this promo. Like, mm -hmm. and while he's in the ring. So. Yeah, uh, the rock comes out and he's like, the rock is committed to WWF. He loves WWE. And then he gets a call on his phone. <laughs> it's his personal assistant. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm getting the, the crowd to like, the shut second, up and wait. <laughs> the second I can get out of here, yeah. I'm getting out of Indianapolis. Yeah. Who wants to hang out in Indianapolis? And he's like, uh, fi Oh, finally the rock has come back to who gives a crap. <laughs> and, the, yeah. Yeah. and, uh, he's like, why would you want to boo the rock? Is it because you think the rock's got a big head? You think the rock's gone Hollywood on you? <laughs> and like, yeah. he's like, okay, so do the people want to boo the rock? And people are like, yes, boo the rock. And he's like, okay, but do you understand what happens if you boo the rock? And and then he goes to do his catchphrase and people want to do it with him. And he's like, <laughs> sing along with the rock is over. If you boo the rock, yeah. you don't get to do the rock's catchphrases anymore. And he does, uh, he goes, you know, if you smell what the rock, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. And then he goes, only the rock gets to say is cooking. So then he doesn't even <laughs> give them a chance to, he doesn't give them the cadence. Yeah. So, so they like, know where it's coming. I thought the like Holly, <laughs> Hollywood rock seems right up your alley as a, as a character. Cause what were you gonna say? Right up your ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've been uh, drinking. Yeah, so. I, 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 yeah. yeah. I love, I love Hollywood rock. Uh, I love, as we've talked about. I think arrogance is the funniest thing in the world. I love a wrestler who pretends that he's better than everybody. Um, I love that, and The Rock even is doing that now uh, in the in the heel stuff that yeah. he's doing. He's he's trying to stop people from from chanting with him and stuff. He'll still give it to you a little yeah. bit now because he knows it's like a. Uh, he understands that, like, if I went and I saw The Rock and I didn't get to say, finally, The Rock is, has come back to wherever or something to the effect from the crowd, I'd be very bummed. So he, I think he understands the weight of that yeah. now, but he's still being, like, uh, throwing him off a little bit and, like, teasing him and stuff. He's got to stop saying that he's spitting gospel. That's the corniest <laughs> shit in the world. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, the Hollywood Rock is is definitely well, right up my I alley. I like Hollywood Rock better. And I was around for Hollywood Rock. I like Rock. Hollywood Rock better, too, whenever it's like he's been in The Mummy Returns and the scorpion king so it's like he shouldn't yeah. have the ego <laughs> he shouldn't have the ego he has because it's like now the rock is a bona fide like legit movie star you know but yeah before, like to think it's like a whole hogan being like i'm hollywood hogan because i was in three ninjas three with like it's funny oh, yeah, no, listen <laughs> uh, for that arrogance but uh our next clip is austin returns to wrong and the rock confrontation so austin returned at no way out 2003 which is the february pay-per-view where he uh beats up eric bischoff because vince mcmahon was essentially like eric bischoff if you don't get steve austin back on raw i'm gonna fire your stupid ass and so yeah. he gets austin back austin whips his ass this is the first raw <laughs> that austin comes back to since june of 2003 or 2002 when he left the company okay. so he goes to thank the fans and the rock immediately comes out and i i don't know this rock I love it where he goes, good to see you, my man. <laughs> like yeah. the most Hollywood disingenuous, like gross version of, of saying hello to him. Uh, yeah. And we I, all I know love people love like it. this that talk that way when they see you. Hey. Yeah. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, right. Like that's how he does now. He's playing his new yeah. self. Like he is Hollywood rock now. You have to understand that. Right. But uh, that's another conversation. He, he tells the, he tells Austin, not to thank the people because whenever you get famous, the people will turn on you. And he goes, he goes yeah. rock level famous, not sign and autographs in Delaware famous. <laughs> uh, and he, yeah. he, he calls the fans sheep. Uh, and then Bischoff comes out to the awesome Eric Bischoff music, uh, which, uh, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the, Bischoff's character at this point is like, He's he's a ratings junkie. He's he's hungry to to get the best ratings. So he's like, whatever I have to do to the, for the Rock to keep the Rock happy, to keep the Rock on my show, I'm going to do. So he offers the Rock a match the next week against Booker T. And if he beats Booker T, he can either face Steve Austin, which is what the Rock wants to do because he's never beat Austin at WrestleMania, or he can face Triple H for the title at WrestleMania. And then Bischoff sends. Uh, his tag team three minute warning out to attack Austin, but of course Austin it whips their ass, hits them with stunners, uh, and hits Re All of them. <laughs> and hits Rico, their manager, also with a stunner. And then the yeah. Rock and Austin face off. And even though this has been a feud that's been going since 1999, it's now 2003. The crowd instantly wants this. Like in the face off, you can tell they're like. Oh, dude, yeah, I I popped for the face off. Like, if you put if you put Daniel Cormier and John Jones in their face off together <laughs> right. right now, you I'd be like, okay, I will pay so much money for that yeah. pay per view again. Uh, so then they they brawl, and then the Rock avoids the stunner and runs as a cowardly heel <laughs> away. He's Hollywood, yeah, baby. Away from my. He's smarter than you. Can't uh, can't fuck up the money maker, you know. So, yeah. uh, the next week. The Rock is then given the option, instead of facing Booker T, he can face anyone on the roster that he wants in this match to determine whether he gets to be to fight for the championship. So he picks the Hurricane. Hell yeah, <laughs> uh, dude. And he's, you know... Shane Helms. Yeah, Hurricane Helms. He's beating the Hurricane's ass. And then Austin <laughs> comes out to distract him, and the Hurricane pins the Rock <laughs> in, like, one of the great, like, little Raw segments. Swerves. Yeah, of all yeah. time. So... The next, our final YouTube clip is the rock concert from Sacramento, California. Austin has been banned from the building. There's a restraining order by the rock against Austin, but Austin's in the parking lot in his truck. And so Eric Bischoff sends somebody out there to set up speakers so that Austin can hear the rock concert. <laughs> And he's just sitting there like, and it's so great how bummed out Stone Cold Steve Austin. All he wants to do is whoop yeah. somebody's ass. Uh, our set list for the rock concert is leaving Sacramento. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing but That's a my favorite one. Uh Whip your ass again. And the rock did it the rock's way. <laughs> so the, the, uh, this I told you that there's a, uh, one of my, like maybe the greatest rock, deliveries of all time during this rock concert 
is when he's talking about uh, um, the uh, in leaving Sacramento, where he's like talking about, you know, I'm leaving Sacramento, and he's like, but I'm uh, I'll be sure to come back when the Lakers beat the Kings in yeah. May, and he that when he says it. He like laughs the, the the but he laughs it in the biggest douchebag like Hollywood yeah. rock way. He is so satisfied with that line, and the crowd hated it. They were so mad it's, at him. It's uh, but the it's so simple. The laugh is just it was yeah. perfect. The the I like the rock is in the ring, and he goes, "The rock's so happy to be here in Sacramento tonight." Yeah. And the best thing yeah. is, in about an hour and a half, the rock will be able to leave Sacramento. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's this. This was just all juice and charisma, yeah. <laughs> and like the rock concert was so. He's good. just playing like I don't know some sort of blues like three chord like really simple progression that he could sing along yeah, and to it's all stolen old blues melodies yeah. and stuff like um, that yeah but uh whoop your ass again rock can't wait to whip boston's <laughs> ass again uh <laughs> the life i love is whipping no stone cold's what, ass like, again <laughs> and they're, they're like they're booing him he's like wait 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 wait, yeah, wait, wait, like, wait. let me, let like, me get this going. line and he's like uh, calm down now calm down <laughs> like it's <laughs> it's so good and it's and then you've you got get, Willie Nelson you signed che- guitar. Uh, check offs Willie Nelson yeah. signed guitar. <laughs> uh, you ain't nothing but a redneck crying all the time. You know, like it's it's yep. so easy. And so of course, then what happens in the middle of the concert, fucking Stone Cold's truck or no, there's an ambulance. <laughs> and the rock's like, Who fainted? Who fainted from the rock singing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when the ambulance goes in, they have to move the blockade. So Austin's truck comes in behind the ambulance and suddenly the rock's like uh terrified he's a chicken shit heel again and he's like uh we need the cops out here bring the cops there's a restraining order and then the cops come out and and uh, i don't know if this is off the cuff or not but the rock goes don't boo the cops they're your cops <laughs> to the sacramento <laughs> crowd uh yeah. and then it turns out that driving the truck is the hurricane and the yeah. rock is suddenly very comfortable like he's he's never dealt with Stone Cold. He keeps before. calling. He's calling. He's calling him the hand the Hamburglar yeah. and uh yeah. Uh, so the cops take the hurricane away, and it's uh, what did he say? He, arrest him. He's guilty of shoving a bunch of McNuggets <laughs> yeah, up his ass. He shoved a bunch of chicken McNuggets <laughs> up his ass. Uh, <laughs> so then he goes back. He's like one more song, and he starts playing the song. And from the bed, from the truck bed, a curtain uh comes yeah. up and like people start cheering like crazy and the rock of course thinks it's for him and it's steve yeah. austin and they do this awesome uh camera shot where it's from the other side of the ring so you've got the rock in the ring you got the ropes you got the rock in the ring you got the other ropes and then standing in the bed of the truck is steve austin looking at the rock and there's like yeah rock has no idea so austin comes in starts whooping the rock's ass the Rock leaves, but he leaves the guitar. And as you said, Chekhov's Willie Nelson guitar. Yeah, uh, something that, that guitar's going to break. For Austin sure. starts stomping the guitar. And I assume this is not the, if The Rock has a real Willie Nelson guitar, this is not it. Uh, well, Austin's like, lo- Austin's like looking at the guitar, and then he looks over at The Rock, and The Rock's like, no, 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 no. Don't you dare break my Willie and- Nelson guitar. <laughs> Yeah, so the so the uh, Austin's gonna break the guitar, and then he looks over at the rock and he puts it on the on the ring between him and the rock, and he's like, "Come here!" Oh yeah, like, he's fighting me him. for this guitar. Come get the guitar. And yeah. then I was a little disappointed that like when the rock finally got close, Austin just smashed the guitar with his yeah. foot, and the rock left. But you gotta hold something off for WrestleMania. Right. But like, I was ready for him to go after it. You know what I mean? But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the rock the rock gets close. Uh, Austin st- stomps out the guitar and then just destroys it and then plays like it acts like he's playing guitar on just the yeah. neck that's left. Uh, so that leads us to our final match, which is Steve Austin versus The Rock, WrestleMania 19, uh, which took place March 30th, 2003. Uh, this low key uh, regarded as one of the best WrestleManias. Um, it's Safeco Field in Seattle, which was a cool like visual looked really yeah. cool. Uh, looked really cool. Ticket, ticket sales, 2.76 million, uh, in ticket sales, the 54,097 people in attendance, but is considered not a great 
buy rate WrestleMania only five hundred sixty thousand for the buy rate. So yeah, I wonder what happened. I wonder why the you it have started everything. tapering off. You know the whole like the, just interest the, in wrestling the, in the general. Boom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so man, <laughs> uh, Hulk Hogan looks uh, not very cool on this cover. Like, look at him. Yeah. He's like, hey yeah, guys, how's it going? Uh, well, and they were having two guys who hadn't main evented at WrestleMania, uh, Brock Lesnar and Angle is the ma- is the final match. Yeah, and this is before that would this is before that would have been like the biggest thing in the world. Like, I'd love to see Brock Lesnar fight fucking Kurt yeah. Angle. He did a shooting star press. Yeah, this is where he does the shooting star press, and nearly kills himself. Uh, yeah. So, Andrew, would you be shocked to know they start this fight? on the floor it's a brawl Whoa, on the floor. man um yeah the <laughs> jerry lawler got me to legitimately lol when he's he's beating up the rock and lawler says austin is showing <laughs> no respect for the scorpion king <laughs> which yeah so yeah, funny it was great it was great it was great there's another time where uh where lawler's like uh uh it, it's later like when 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 they're still fighting on the outside and uh, Lawler's like, uh, he should get disqualified for those knee braces. They're made out of metal. He's using them as a weapon. And uh, and Jr. goes, "What the hell would you make a knee brace out of? Cotton candy?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so they they again they sort of work their classic formula, which is they like <clears throat> uh, they do a lot of teases of the finishers. They even they trade finishers. Uh, the Rock puts on Austin's vest, which is sort of the iconic thing in this match, and he like beats up Steve Austin while wearing his vest for most of this. Uh, yeah. But the Rock hits a rock bot, or the Rock hits a stunner on Austin. Austin hits a rock bottom on the Rock, uh, and then Austin hits his stunner at the end for a big near fall. But in the end, the Rock hits three rock bottoms in a row on Austin, yeah. and people's elbow and three yeah, rock bottoms and pins him to finally like close the loop. So uh, the rock finally beats Austin at WrestleMania. Um, I really like this match. There's a backstory here where Austin was actually in the hospital the, the day before this match and maybe up to a few hours before this, like he thought he was having a heart attack because he had pounded a yeah. bunch of energy drinks <laughs> apparently and not eating any real food and was like, going to sh- going into shock i get yeah. it he had a panic attack he kind of had, a panic, had a panic attack, attack. you don't want to you don't want to say that the the that the uh the rattlesnake had a panic attack but the rattlesnake drank a few too many uh bad boy energies yeah. and and had a panic attack <laughs> um well and it's uh, probably because austin knows this is his last match like going in he's in he's in bad shape um like yeah. his neck is fucked up again He's his knees are all fucked up. He's just like the wear and tear of being the top guy for the amount of time he was the top guy is really starting to take its toll. So, I uh, like I grimace when I watch these rock bottoms in this match because the rock bottom is not an easy move to take as a bump. Like, <laughs> so I can imagine if you're if you're in bad shape, taking three of them probably doesn't feel great. I feel like it's you just land flat on your back. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, I mean, like I feel like there's a lot worse. About, like if you're if all your bones hurt <laughs> all the time, yeah, and you're getting sure. jarred with the fucking rock bottom, uh, so, yeah. So that like it's a fitting end, and like I like the the fact that it's a different kind of feud because the Rock is the heel and uh, like, but he's Hollywood Rock this time, and it's Austin coming back. Um, God, he didn't wrestle until WrestleMania 38. That's crazy. Yeah, so Austin retires after this match due to injuries and becomes like an on-air figure. He becomes like the foil to Eric Bischoff. He's like the co-general manager of Raw for most mm-hmm. of 2003 and 2004, but he can't wrestle. So, And he said that he had he admits he had a really hard time whenever he stopped mm-hmm. wrestling knowing what to do with himself. Cause I don't. It, yeah, there's got to be there's got to be somebody's ass that needs some kicking. Yeah, there, uh, there are mud holes that need stomp to dry, <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> but it is, he like, of course, he's the baby faces like stand it, you know, 
to take on the evil general manager or whatever. But like he does that for a while and then he's part time after 2005. Uh, he's what did Candy ask Dave Meltzer give that match? The Rock versus Austin 19 match. Give me one sec. Because what are you giving it? You're. Is this your favorite match? Listen, man. <laughs> like, it was the match they needed to have. Yeah. There was it was just them, man on man. They didn't have to have a bunch of shenanigans. Nobody fucked with that them. That's true. This is like, sort if, of the first one that doesn't have all of those Attitude Era sort of shenanigans with it. Yeah. Yeah. If this match had happened this year, it is getting five stars. <laughs> Because of star inflation right. that Dave Meltzer has done, it's getting six. I feel like this. I feel like this is a. It's not a. It's not, I'm not saying this is the greatest match I've ever seen, no. but there's psychology to it. The fans are super into it. Everybody's super over. It is. Uh, it is the fans pop for a lot of big near falls. The built-in story. There was a unique. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a built-in story. There was a unique thing at the end where they gave each other each other's finishers. And then The Rock had to literally hit his big finisher three times to beat Stone Cold. Um, and you weren't sure it was going to work. Like, it's not like it was like, oh, he hit him the third time. This this match yeah. is over. Um, I don't see why they, this one doesn't get five stars, to be honest. This is the lowest rated of their WrestleMania matches. This is a four-star match, according to one Dave Meltzer. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know. But if, if Tajiri was in it, they probably he probably would have given it five what else stars. Do you want, you know? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I just don't get it, yeah. man. Like it's, it's like, uh, and stars don't matter that much. But it's just like I, this was like a fitting end. This was a uh, there. What is the? I guess what is the criticism of this match? You yeah, I, I'd, I'd be interested to see uh, what he wrote at the time. You know, there's no like hokey shit. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, like, like we said, shenanigans. There, there's no comedy. It is just like a straight up match between two of the best of all time. And like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, Austin retires and then the rock the next month, uh, at backlash 2003 faces Goldberg, who is now, who's the new, they got Goldberg. They're bringing him in. Uh, okay. much to much at the rocks request the rock helped get Goldberg into WWE. So he faces Goldberg at backlash and loses to him on the way out uh, to film the movie walking tall. Uh, and then oh, he okay. comes back at WrestleMania 20 the next year to team up with Mick Foley uh, to take on Randy Orton, Batista and Ric Flair at WrestleMania 20. And then after that, we get sort of the sporadic rock. So that's uh, not that WrestleMania 19 is the end of the rocks in ring career. Cause he still has matches, but like him as a WWE guy who also does movies, I think WrestleMania 19 is the end of that too. Uh, Cause after that, he doesn't really do matches, you know, that's why he becomes movie star guy who occasionally does matches, you know, yeah. cause he doesn't after WrestleMania 20, Unless I am incorrect, he doesn't come back until those Cena matches at like you know WrestleMania twenty eight. So we're talking seven or eight mm-hmm. years. Like he'll come on TV and do a promo, do a live appearance or something. Mm-hmm. But for matches, I think that's it. Yeah. Wow. So it's uh, again wild. interesting, and he's doing like a big program now, which is cool. Yeah. Well, a big program. He wanted to be something else, and has turned into this. But he's doing a good job. Like. He's he's turned it into some like what uh, into something interesting. Do you think he was going to beat Roman? I can't imagine that he beats Roman. It doesn't help anybody if he beats Roman. Um, yeah, I think it's really stupid uh, to help have him beat Roman. So like, I don't understand what they were. But thinking. I also don't understand. Yeah, because what do you do with Cody Rhodes? So unless yeah, and then and then if if Roman beats him, then you just had the Rock come back. You're just kind of like delaying. Like it's a cool moment, but it doesn't it doesn't push any t- type of storyline. It doesn't, it kind of helps Roman, I guess, but Roman doesn't need any help. Yep. Like, it's just like an empty kind of like uh, uh, bump, but it's like now it's a story. Yeah. Like, the, the people forced them into writing a good fucking storyline. Yeah. The only thing I can think is maybe they would do night one Roman versus The Rock, where Roman beats Rock 
and then night two, Cody versus R- Roman, where Cody finally wins. But then, but the problem you've got, uh, Go but then you've got Roman being able to say, "Oh well, I was, you know, I was worn out from beating, from having to face the Rock, so you didn't beat me at my, at my best or whatever." Yeah, well, and plus, like, talk about a foregone conclusion where if it's like, it's like, uh, we got Roman versus the Rock in the first mat in the first night. The winner faces Cody right. Rhodes, and it's like eh, there's nobody in the world who's like the Rock's going to beat Roman Reigns and then fight Co- uh, Cody well, Rhodes. Well, in that case, it could be end. interesting if Rock beat Reigns and then Cody beat the Rock the next night. Then you'd have Reigns being able to say, "Well, you didn't beat me," but then you waste the like four years worth of Roman Reigns not being beat yeah, that's on a guy who's not yeah. there all the time. So, yeah, yeah, I think this is better. You know, I think they were, I think they were forced to do it by the crowd, the unexpected crowd reaction, again, playing a part in what the rock has to do. And I don't see how it was unexpected. And the fact that, <laughs> and the fact that CM Punk got hurt. Cause like that fucks up what Seth Rollins was going to be doing for the most part. And uh, God, I would just kind of love for him to just keep getting hurt, man. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's, but like this, this is interesting. You know, the rock versus Austin feud, like, that's the feud of the Attitude Era. That's what makes WWF the slash WWE the behemoth it becomes, and the reason that they're able to beat WCW, put them out of business. Like, if if you t- if you look at the interstitials, I was trying to talk about the other feuds and stuff that they were in the middle of, in between all those things. Like, yeah. all of that helps because you have all this talent that you can bounce people off of, so it's not constantly the rock versus Austin at every pay-per-view or whatever, but like the build to WrestleMania 15, you know, the build to WrestleMania 17, those are giant moments. And uh, even the build to backlash, I was going to say that back, like that backlash segment where uh, Austin, where they do the funeral, that's the week before that, that pay-per-view is on Sunday. I'm buying that pay per view if I see this segment on the Monday. Oh, I gotta fucking see this thing. Oh dude. yeah, I was, I was thinking the same exact thing. And uh, the, earlier I wanted to do this, but this might be the perfect time to do it. The videos that you sent me, uh, this this string of videos, the just the titles. Uh, Stone Cold re- relinquishes IC title to The Rock. Pretty normal. Stone Cold throws The Rock's IT, IC title into the <laughs> river. Steve Austin throws the corporation a beer bash. The Rock throws Stone Cold Steve Austin off a bridge. <laughs> the Rock holds a funeral for Stone Cold. <laughs> yeah, it, who was it, Who wouldn't want to watch yeah. any of that? Well, you and know? it's like you have two wildly entertaining characters that are entertaining in different ways. Um, you have two people who can play heel or babyface who are over with the crowd. Two incredibly great technicians in the ring like the the fact that the rock at wrestlemania 15 and 99 has only been wrestling for three years generously is crazy Mm -hmm. like the the amount that he can get out of all his stuff the fact that they know what they need to do like nobody wants to see uh headlocks and uh like uh rest holds from the rock and Steve Austin. It's fucking pedal to the metal. Like we're going for finishers. There's chairs, there's that, blood. There's that's like, a good point. Because no one wants to see an and arm. Well, one of the, like one of the things I was going to say is, uh, and so I'm glad you reminded me out of all these matches, they never, uh, lock up once. Yeah. It's never like, it's so stupid that wrestling matches like start off with the two guys just going, and locking up together there's no like i understand it gets you into the headlock you can you can chain it into a bunch of different things but like it doesn't look real nobody nobody believes that's how you start a fight and both guys are very clearly agreeing (laughs) to do that and that's what's funny is like that is from the like a lot of that is from the like cornet era like they 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 did that all the time where wrestling looked more real but they did that one thing in this these guys just started fighting when it was time to go they started just throwing haymakers well it's like you threw me off a bridge and now I want and now I'm going to lock yeah. up with you. Like I hate yeah. you. The rock, like you said, there's a part, the rock you know, gets on the, <laughs> the rock yeah. hates you. <laughs> like, there is no, cause locking up, uh, you know, it's from amateur wrestling. You start in a, in yeah. a, like a position or whatever. Kind of, but even, yeah, even they like, don't do it every time they look at each other like yeah. that. And then sometimes that happens, but, but it's the, like, like yeah. Like if I'm, if I'm so mad, <laughs> 
at you that I ran over your car with a uh, with a monster truck. Fuck a lockup. Like it's on. Yeah, I'm probably gonna yeah, bite you. It's on really site. You know, like it. Yeah. The and it is the best elements of the Attitude Era. Like if this were all Vince Russo was known for, and this was all of Vince Russo's ideas, he'd be heralded as a king. Because like it works yeah. for these guys, but as people always say, you know, Jim Cornette is is uh, happy to say like Vince Russo lucked into having the two biggest stars of his generation, uh, and maybe in wrestling history, be there at the same yeah. time with an entire crew of guys who had worked for years as wrestlers, with the best commentator in the business and the highest uh, possible like production values. And you just put those and their budget was right, insane. And you just put those two guys together. Who couldn't do that? Who, who couldn't yeah. see Austin versus Rock a million miles away and giving a compelling reason to watch these two guys fight? Like, you know, yeah. it, it, and so uh, Russo deserves some credit because some I'm a lot of this I'm sure is his idea, but he has the two best guys to do it. Uh, like, you can only mess that up. Yeah, you can only get in the way. You know, like it. Like you don't. Yeah. You know, so. This is a lot of fun. Of course, you know, I love wrestling, so I love going back and watching all this stuff and uh, doing all the research and things. So hopefully people, you know, you, the people out there enjoyed it. I think it put a smile on my face. You said you had a great time. Like, uh, yeah, we, well, we did the classic thing of start as a as a one podcast, switch to a different type of podcast and get rid of the people who are interested in the yeah. first thing. And then we did a first thing like went back to doing the first thing so this is probably gonna get six right. views but um i had a great time doing it and uh we're gonna do it more often now we're not gonna do it all the time but uh i want to revisit wrestling stuff uh from time to time because uh you do a really good job you 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 taught me the filling in the blanks i texted him the other day i was like please make sure you fill in the blanks he's like i got you i was planning on doing that because like um we can't I, I, t I, I don't have time to watch everything, but I have time to watch a good amount uh, before I go to bed every night. So, uh, yeah, yeah it was great. The, Thank the you hope for your there info. Was like, I don't want to just throw, we don't want it to be a, a show anymore that's just like, we're throwing a bunch of random matches at you, or we're watching events that yeah. don't care, or we're reviewing a bunch of matches on an event that had something important, but we also have to watch the mid card or whatever. Like, the, I maybe taking the Sum 41 uh all killer no filler approach yeah. is the way to do it but um yeah i i hope people enjoyed it if nothing else i think you know for our banter etc if you're not into wrestling hopefully we painted a good picture for you we'll be back to more of the normal nonsense uh next week but for now andrew we'll be back next week because the start marks podcast even though kayfabe may be dead we're alive Feels good. Feels good. Feels like good. What a what 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 Uh I forgot. Stop. There it is.